Commander, you've received a new message at your private terminal. We probably have lots of messages at our private terminal because I didn't read like any of them last night. Oh, we got three. MSV Corsica, last known docking coordinates. Location coordinates here, he stationed Strabo System Eagle Nebula. Data mining confirms the last reported location of merchant freighter MSV Corsica as, at, as the gear he stationed in the Strabo system. Oh, we already did that. Already did that. Source of the VI virus detected. We already did that. An amazing find from Dr. Richard Talos, curator, Alliance Museum of Galactic Exploration Earth. Commander Shepard, you have our thanks for recovering the data from the MSV Est Estevanico. Data shows that the ship was attacked and overrun by blood pack mercenaries and Vortra soldiers. According to the dated records, this was the first Alliance crew to encounter the Vortra. How frightened they must have been. We're sending salvage crews now to recover what they can from the museum. Thanks for your dedication. You're welcome. All righty. Um, let's go get that IFF, eh, bros? And not bros. Couple planets to read. Tesha, first and larger of the two gas giants in the Hawking Ada gateway system. Tesha is composed mainly of hydrogen and helium. The brown and orange coloration of its upper cloud decks are caused by the ups upwiling of sulfur from lower levels of the atmosphere. Yes. Uh, and Skog, you know what? I should probably give some background on the IFF. Habat is a methane ammonia ice giant. When Heavy Metals Exo Mining of China won the bidding rights to develop the moon of Presar of Presrop in the Century System, it began by establishing Helium-3 refueling facility on Habat. The station, completed this year, is considered a model facility by the executives of the state-run company. Though the station produces more than enough fuel to supply the HMEC ships running to and from Century, it has a crew of only a dozen for maintenance and oversight. Nearly all the day-to-day -day operations are automated. Is it possible to run out of gas in this game? It is. If you run out of gas, it pulls you back to the uh, system that has the mass relay in it. Yes, you can run out. Oh shit. Uh we gotta I guess I probably should have explored these last night, but it's fine. We'll do a little foreplay here. So the IFF, by the way, uh, I forget IFF stands for something, and of course I'm not remembering what it is off the top of my head. Go to the brown um The collector ship yielded two key pieces of information. First, the collectors are actually the ancient Protheans indoctrinated and mutated into servants of the Reapers. Second, the Omega 4 relay leads to the Galactic Core. The intense gravitational fields of the galactic core make any jump through the Omega-4 relay a death sentence unless a Reaper, Identify, Friend, or Foe device can be found to give the Normandy a chance to navigate the field safely. So it basically tricks the relay into thinking that we are a friend of the Reapers. IFF is a real thing used in aircraft. I believe that. Does this game interact with Earth and countries? I thought it was a completely different planet and set in outer space, but seeing China, I'm confused now. No, Earth is part of this, um, Mia. Earth is the home base of the humans. So there are, even though the human system alliance is like, that's like the galactic of humanity, but we still have like countries and sub interests. Pretty cool. Theropto is a typical ice gas giant with traces of chlorine and sulfur in its atmosphere. It has over 100 moons and an extensive ring system composed of pulverized rock, presumably the debris from shattered moons. We did. We visited Earth, uh, I think, after... Yeah, it was two streams ago. Contra. A terrestrial world of average size, Contra's atmosphere composed of nitrogen and argon. The frozen surface is mainly composed of tin with deposits of calcium. Aside from some spectacular formations of water ice at the poles, the planet has little to recommend it. We are doing the Reaper IFF mission tonight, Farnix. Clendagon. Clendagon is an arid terrestrial, slightly larger than Earth, 
but with a lower density that reflects its relative lack of heavier elements. The crust is composed of tin and aluminum, with wide deserts of dust-fine sand that are easily stirred by the wind. Clendagon's most striking feature is the Great Rift Valley that stretches across the southern hemisphere. What is most fascinating about the rift is that it does not appear to be natural. The geological record suggests it is the result of a glancing blow by a mass accelerator round of unimaginable destructive power. This occurred some 37 million years ago. Kamehara. Kamehara has a thin atmosphere of carbon dioxide and xenon. The surface is icy and composed of sodium oxide with deposits of calcium. It contains a few unremarkable metals, but mainly consists of rock. The presence of canyons and floodplains indicates that liquid water once existed, suggesting Tamahera had a thicker insulating atmosphere in the past. What's up, Shadow? Totally understandable. It's okay that you've been busy. It's good to have you here now. Let's go to Schwarzschild. Glad to have you all here, chat. We're gonna have fun tonight. Rihali. Rihali is a typical hydrogen helium gas giant. It's notable because none of its moons is larger than 12 kilometers in diameter, a rare trait among charted gas giants in the galaxy. Lady. Strawberry Lee, thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. Lenosa. Lenosa is a hydrogen helium gas giant. It's surrounded by several thin rings of debris. Analysis of this debris has been difficult due to its extreme age and fragility, but several apparently nano-manufactured materials have been identified. Leading theory is that the inhabitants of the Atamis mined the atmosphere for helium-3. Did you do the mission in Mass Effect 1 with Major Kyle, the biotic cultist one? Yes, I did. That took place on the moon of Clendagon, and you could see the Great Rift Valley from the moon. That's badass. I actually didn't pick up on that. I'm glad you said that, but yes, we did do that. The Tamis. The Tamis is a superterrestrial world, a third larger than Earth. It is in a post-garden state that clearly shows evidence of attack from space. While now waterless, the shores of former oceans show patterns of cratering too regular to be anything but saturation bombardment by dreadnought-class kinetic weapons. Although it is unclear how, most of the atmosphere has been lost. Archaeologists have found little of note. It appears that all settled regions were touched by the global bombardment. The few relics found suggest an advanced spacefaring culture thrived on the world somewhere between from 20 to 40 million years ago. The level of antiquity makes it impossible to estimate the world's former population or guess whether it was the race's homeworld or a colony. Atahil. A typical Venusian greenhouse world, Atahil is only of note for a few scattered craters. Though flattened by millions of years of high pressure, the marks of orbital bombardment strikes are unmistakable. It is generally accepted among academics that whoever hailed from or settled Schwarzschild's second planet, Edemus, must have outposts on a, a hill as well. Man, all these planets have bombardment. It sounds like this was a system that just got absolutely blasted by something. Seriously, Taco, I agree, right? Like, I want to know more about all these places. All right. Minisini. Minisini is a brown dwarf of approximately 37 Jupiter masses. It is young enough that some nuclear fusion still occurs within its depths. It is luminous and radiates more heat than it receives from the star Thorn, with an atmospheric temperature in excess of 1800 degrees Kelvin. Early probes of, of Thorn showed evidence of a minor gravi gravitic anomaly in the Northern Hemisphere. This area of unexpectedly low mass did not move with the prevailing wind patterns. While an investigation was planned by the Besserell Institute of Planetary Science, the school ultimately sent an expedition to study the famed deep anomalies of the gas giant Ploba instead. Lethe. Lethe is the largest moon of Minnesini, massive enough to retain its own thin atmosphere of methane and nitrogen and heated by the brown dwarf to relatively moderate temperatures. While nearly the size of Earth, its overall density is low, suggesting a paucity of valuable heavy metals. It is tidally locked to Minyasini, one hemisphere always bathed in the brown dwarf's heat, dim red light. The moon experiences cons constant weak tectonic activity driven by the tidal fluxes of Minyasini's gravity rather than Lethe's own internal heat. Several large ancient volcanoes release wide-ranging flows of molten silicon. All right, derelict reaper. Orbiting 
Munisni is a two kilometer long ship with the unmistakable profile of a Reaper. It is giving off power signatures in localized areas, but they are far weaker than a ship this size would indicate. The Reaper seems to maintain a mass effect field that has kept it from falling into the failed star. The massive holes have been blasted and melted into parts of the hull and remain unrepaired. The only logical conclusion is that the Reaper died, or was at least reduced to minimal functioning a long time ago. Ooh, baby. Shall we, Doc? Sounds like we're going inside. All right. So, if if I'm a if I'm a thinking man, what if I was aboard a Reaper and I was potentially dangerous? What would I be? Um, I think we're gonna take Grunt because Grunt. Um, is good against husks. I have a sense that there's probably going to be husks. And uh, husks and scions probably sound, seem like the thing. I would agree, Munchie, that we probably have to deal with that. I literally just edited a clip and you did that, ooh baby, the exact same way. So I think we have a new montage coming up. Great. Ooh baby. Can't wait to see that. Uh, we're going to need whatever's going to burn off I think probably more. I think we go... Need crowd control. I don't know if there will be a Praetorian. I, think, I don't know if... Uh, I don't know if we're going to have... Um, collectors on the ship. If there are going to be collectors, that... Uh, Morden becomes a lot less useful. Although I have pull now, so... I think we're going to go Morden. We're gonna go grunt mord. Oh, and that sucks. Would love to have the extra point for that. Cryoblast, snap freezes your targets. Probably. Oh, do I want to go cryoblast or do I want to save for neural shock? Probably save. No, cryoblast. It seems like it'd be good in a pinch. What's with all the chop, Joker? Doing my best. The wind's gusting to 500 kph. But there's a second ship alongside the Reaper. It's not transmitting any IFF, but the LADAR paints its silhouette as Geth. I guess we know why the science team stopped reporting in. What just happened? The Reaper's mass effect fields are still active. We just passed inside their envelope. the hurricane, huh? Okay, well, uh, Geth doesn't sound fun. Let's go ahead and, uh, pop on the incendiary ammo. Alright, we've got it. Okay. Alright, we got Grunt. Good to go with Fortify. Wow, it's um pretty nice. Board the old Reaper. Uh, smells bad. There's blood, but something's wrong with it. Gotta love that there's wall safes on a derelict Reaper. I'm not gonna worry about that terminal. Work log.
What's up, Everick? You did not miss any moments. We literally just boarded the Derelict Reaper. We're trying to get the IFF drive so we can go through the Omega-4 relay. So you have not missed anything. We finished cataloging specimens A203 to B016. No evidence of active nanotechnology noted. Dr. Chindana believes they would have decayed over the last 37 million years. There's not enough data to support his claim. He asserts that the truth is patently obvious. I am concerned. Chindana has been staring at the samples for hours. He says he's listening to them. So, something that we know, that these people don't know, is that Reapers have the ability to indoctrinate organic life. So... It will be interesting to see if there is a progression of indoctrination in these. Like maybe that guy's sitting there staring at the thing saying he's listening to them. You recall from Mass Effect 1, indoctrination, you start to hear whispers in your head that start to sound like your own. You can't get them out. And you don't necessarily even know how to differentiate that voice from your own. It becomes very scary. So uh, it, we... What just happened? The Reaper put up kinetic barriers. I don't think we can get through from our side. What? Useless. Uh, can we shut them off? We'll have to take down the barrier generators from in here. Any idea where they are? At the moment of activation, I detected a heat spike in what is likely the Rex Mass Effect core, sending the coordinates now. Be advised, this core is also maintaining the Reaper's altitude. So when we take the barriers down to escape, the wreck falls into the planet core. And that means everyone dies. Yeah, I got it. Not with you at the helm, buddy. We're, we're gonna we're gonna make sure that we stoke Joker's confidence. I don't need him I don't need him wavering in his confidence in this moment. If any helmsman can pull us off this thing before it reaches crush depth, it's you. We'll make a sweep for survivors and recover what data we can. Stand by. Aye aye. Good hunting. <laughs> Oi. What a mess. Anyone else hungry? Grunt, now's not the time to be thinking about foot food, brother. Oh boy. This is a lot of tubes. You know what's you know what I find fascinating is it's almost as if Reapers were designed to be boarded by organic life. I don't really understand that, but you're married? You never mentioned that. Katie had anger management issues. When my brother got married, the best man tried to hit on her. She kicked him down the church steps. Uh, what? Katie's my wife. I, I must have told you this story. No, I know my wife. I remember that day was the only time I saw her wear stockings. Yeah, the, the kind with seams up the back. That's what I remember, too. What the hell is this? How can we remember the same thing? Memory alteration. Reaper affecting their minds. Oh my god. That would, that would be so unsettling. Oh, I would... Dude, that gave me goosebumps. I've heard that audio log so many times, and it still gives me goosebumps. That is... Oh. If I start remembering and talking about a Katie, we're in trouble here, chat. Incoming! Incoming what? Oh, God. I am Groven! Grunt. One down. I'll put them down. There you go, Grunt. That a boy. All right, we got husks. Too late. No. Oh, you're dead. I am Grogan. Yeah. Dude, Grunt, you're about to tank this mission, brother. There was a SMTH about Codex about the Reaper ships also carry their troops around. So not necessarily organic life, but they have to be human sized and their troops have to be able to go around. Oh, cool. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Oh yeah, I guess if you're gonna have husks and shit. I thought Geth made these husk things. Circumstances support Reaper origin. Enemies in front. 
Nothing can hurt me! Oh boy. There you go, grunt. Take them all out, buddy. I love that Grunt just goes hams up, just goes ham on him. It's so great. Should have run. Now you're fried. Grunt. There we go. Nothing can hurt me. Man, these things move so erratically. Morton. Oh, oh shit. Neutralized. Headed for combat. Range. More? Burn through any Oof. Classic signs. We know those are the classic signs of indoctrination, man. Not great. Sniper. Not a problem. Shooter is good. Good enough they should come out of hiding. Somebody else shot that? I thought that was Morden. Might be useful. Business Taking now. cover. Hey, Let's Chico, wait. thank you for the twenty three months. How could I ban oh. you, friend? They're all mine. Nothing can hurt me. Shotgun here. Burn and die. I am Krogan. Yeah, dude, grunt. I need that energy right now, man. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh, oh, oh. Uh. Oh god. Scion bad. Uh not difficult. Okay, these guys taken out. So many. Feel the blood rage! Morton, come back, buddy. Ugh. Nothing can hurt me. Wow, this thing wrecks. Oh shit. Uh Let's burn through any armor. Wow. 
Wow. Wow, we got through that way better than I thought we would. Cyans are ridiculously tanky. They are they are the worst. scary is it's hard to know at this point whether it's that guy talking or whether that's the reaper indoctrination we have no way of knowing whether that guy's indoctrinated or not it's almost creepier if that's this reaper talking to us through that guy like almost leaving a warning message for us via a host yikes This would be terrifying. See, if we were on this ship, I would be worried that because we're on the ship that we are susceptible to the same thing, right? Like we have no way of knowing exactly how long indoctrination takes. And what if as we're on the Reaper right now, we're learning that this crew got indoctrinated, that this we are handy. also getting indoctrinated. That makes this, that makes this that much more terrifying to me that we are literally aboard a thing that has the ability to possess us. Yeah, that's why, uh, so Barrett, that's why I love having the mix of Morden and, and Grunt here. Grunt can tank the shit out of stuff and really is just out to kill, isn't going to think twice about it. And Morden has the intellect to really make good decisions and understand what we're doing, which is great. alone stronger in numbers smarter too as i understand that geth just shot husks and said our name ideogram come on man hostiles to the left you know better than that Oh, it said the name? Oh. I didn't, I didn't catch that. I didn't even see the name. My bad. Okay, my bad. I know better. <laughs> That's a, it's kind of lame that the CCs gave that away. I never play this game with subtitles, so... That's my bad. Alright, I got shitty there. <laughs> Can't reach the target. Dude, spoilers and subtitles is super lame. Not difficult. It's so lame. <laughs> the 
They absolutely should have just done like Geth, right? Like unknown Geth. That's so stupid that they would put Legion as the name there. Oh, what an oversight. What an oversight. Whatever. You don't know what you don't know what Legion's all about. Nothing can hurt me. I'ma keep acting like I didn't see it, alright? Subtitles gave a name away, yeah. Super lame. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, grunt, buddy. Look at Grunt. Look at Grunt go. Uh, arc projector. Arc projector. What am I doing here? Oh my god. Uh, Morden come back. Oh my god, this mission is nuts. Okay. Time to fight! that that thing can attack through borders, but I can't. Nothing can hurt me. Okay. Ideogram, my apologies, buddy. Sorry I got shitty with you. I feel bad about that. <laughs> I didn't even catch it. I'm so not used to playing this game with subtitles. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, thanks for being here, friends. Let's go figure out what that gets after. Why Why is there a geth? Why is there a named geth on a rebound? I must know. Dude, Grunt, where are you? Go. There we go. Tank him. Tank him. I am well, what's funny is uh, Ideogram's a newcomer too, so I mean, it was literally a natural observation, which is funny. All right, we're not going to make a big deal out of it. It's fine. There's still plenty of intrigue. Let's check out what's going on here. Yeah, Grunt is having the time of his life. That's why I wanted to bring him. I figured he'd just, like, ruthlessly slay everything, and that's exactly what he's doing, so I'm here for it. Incoming. We got... Oh, God. We got, uh... Morden for the brains. And we got Grunt for the brawn. Oh, no! on that stupid thing. Look at this. Holy hell. Grunt, where are you, buddy? Feel the blood rage. Stop firing at me, idiot. 
grunt. Just just take it, man. Just sit there and take it. Oh shit. I forgot to fortify him before he went in. Nothing can hurt me. There you go. Fortify yourself, big dog. Front, get your ass down there, bud. baby let's go uh grunt you better not be stuck Whew. lots of credits available here i'll take that let me guess more enemies you're up i got it of course. Wish I was standing down with two of them. All right, let's go. You got no shield. Whoa. Oh, come on. Oh, Grunt is in big trouble. I need my shield back. encouragement would you give to somebody who's having trouble with hostility towards people who give them very fabulous advice about their lives when they find out they don't have a job they say things like there must be something you can do even if you hate it set boundaries tell people how you tell people what it's like when they say that and explain why you would rather they didn't say it to you 
set boundaries and tell them what the consequences will be if they continue to do that. You can't really change other people's behavior. You can only tell people how you're impacted by it. So just be very open and honest about your experience. Don't worry about how it necessarily makes those other people feel to hear you say that. Your boundaries are important. Your experience is important. Advocate for yourself. Okay. Incoming. More? Okay, great. Awesome. Cool. Gordon, get up there. Front, fortify yourself, buddy. Can't reach the target. Why are you all the way back there, man? Honest. Need you on the front line. Ah! Uh, Too late. Now you're dead. Thanks for boosting that question, Skog. Appreciate it. Dude, Zions are maybe the worst enemy in this entire game. Maybe. these things man only remaining task is destruction of mass effect core then the ship gets squished ah, make sure we're gone i will grunt okay all right so far so good we just need the iff and then we are getting out of here yeah, i guess it's a good point king good point Reaper IFF, take. That it. <laughs> Cerberus team succeeded. Current location unknown. Yeah, it seemed a little uh, small, but hey. Put them 
down. Oh shit. Oh, there's like a thing I can do up there. Okay. Uh Dude, grunt, I need you, buddy. Feel the blood rain. I'm up here. Neutral, not difficult. Should bring it with us. You want it? They're dangerous, but I can handle one. <laughs> Tally said no one's ever captured a Geth intact. Maybe a little risky, but it's just one. We're out of time. Let's move. Hang on, folks. Open the port side airlock. One shot. No deaths. I can't believe I got through that mission with no deaths. <laughs> oh my god. I was ready for that to take all night. Oh my god. That, that mission's the worst. It is just like constant like field management. Holy shit. All right. Woo. Let's let the nerves uh, come down here for a second. I suppose I meant to ask how should one deal with feeling like the ableism some seems to be coming from everyone they meet. Like it's an elephant in the room. I cut out the people who do this. I would have to leave my guild and all the online communities. It seems like a dumb question to me, but how does one care less about something so present in their lives as disability? I don't know that you care less about it. Um, ableism is definitely everywhere for sure. I, I mean, uh, absolutely is Cinder. I, I, 
you know, I hate to say something along the lines of acceptance because it makes it sound like you have to just accept oppression. But at the same time, I think like if it's something that's leaking into everything you're doing and it's something that's bothering you maybe more than you want to be bothered by, I think sometimes it's the way in which you make meaning out of how people approach you in that way, right? Like if you are making meaning out of it in such a way that it's becoming destructive to you and your environment, is that worth looking at? I mean, it's very hard for me to say without knowing specifics in terms of like how people are interacting with you and how that's showing up, but ableism is everywhere. And uh, it's not great, right? Like I'm, I'm not trying to suggest that it's just fine and we should just leave it as is, as is. At the same time, like I do think there's maybe some level of like either acceptance or reframing of it that might be more palatable and at least allow you to do some of the things you enjoy with people that you enjoy being around. Okay. That was on insanity, and I thought this was one of the hardest missions. Yeah, no, this mission's nuts. I can't believe uh, that I survived that. I really cannot believe that. Um, that was wild. I really should have done a vote because I guarantee you anybody who knows anything about that mission would have absolutely voted no. There is no way that that was going to be a survival, but hey, we made it work. Reaper IFF successfully retrieved. Loss of Cerberus team on the Reaper vessel, unfortunate, but unsurprising. We'll use the team's health records for comparisons against husks encountered on Reaper for possible insight into indoctrination and husk conversion process. Okay, so, you know, here's the issue now. We, uh... We now have a live geth that we just put on board the Normandy. I don't know how I feel about that. And Tally certainly isn't going to like it. Uh, Tally? Um, you remember when I was the most awesome defense lawyer you ever had in your entire life and we got you off the hook with the, with the Admiralty Board? Might have to call in a favor. salvage we recovered. For now, we've stored it in Edie's AI core. We need better equipment to fight the Reapers. An intact Geth would be invaluable to Cerberus's cyber weapons division. We'll have to disagree on that, ma'am. I saw enough of these things I need in Prime. Space it. Cerberus has a long-standing cash bounty for an intact Geth. I assure you, the reward is significant. I'm not doing this for money. What? It's... Could you be any farther off the mark, Miranda? Unlock this deck. <laughs> I know. No yeah, yeah, you know what? I'm going to keep a live Geth on board. After everything I've dealt with, after Tally has been vehemently against it, and Miranda's going to sit here and say we should keep this on board because you can make a lot of money? Get out of here. Oh my God. The Bearded Fool, thank you so much for coming in on the raid. I appreciate it, friends. Those of you coming along, I am Dr. Mick. I'm a licensed couple and family therapist. I have a PhD in human development. This is Game Sessions with a Therapist. We are playing a spoiler-free run of Mass Effect. Uh, and we use the game to illustrate various psychological concepts. We talk about mental health, psychology, therapy, and more in an effort to destigmatize those things and bring information to people who wouldn't otherwise have it in a responsible and ethical way. Thank you for bringing people my way. I appreciate it, and I hope you had a great stream. Uh, yeah, so let's... Um, there's a couple things. A couple things that I'm going to need to make sure that I bring to your attention. First of all, uh, that thing helped us. I've killed hundreds of these things, but I've never had a chance to talk to one. This one tried to communicate with us. Hell, it probably saved our lives. Why? Reactivating the Geth is a risk. If you do so, it should be for humanity's best interests, and not your curiosity. I still think our best interests involve an airline. Says the woman who literally just told me that there's a huge bounty on the Geth. I, w Miranda... I mean, Jacob's uh, being a little squirrely here, too. Why are we being so rash? Can I please have a conversation, a nice, rational, nuanced conversation with a couple of people here that are on the crew instead of it being this, like, polar opposition of one person saying we absolutely need to keep it and the other person saying absolutely not. There is nuance to this discussion. I don't need polarized people. I need people who are willing to engage with me in that nuance. 
I want to know why it has a piece of N7 armor strapped to its chest. Battle trophy, maybe? Would a machine care about that? No. Trophies imply emotions that AIs don't have. I doubt it's more than a convenient field repair. We have no way. No. I want to talk to it. I want to talk to it. It said my name. And it shot husks. I want to talk to it. It's wearing my armor. I'm not deciding one way or the other until I know what we've got here. I want to start it up. Interrogate it. If we activate it, there is no guarantee we can deactivate it again. Bullets can. Yeah. That's not what I... Thank you, both of you, for your recommendations. I've made my decision. I'd rather have Tally in the room. Freak when she hears about this. So what about this Reaper IFF? I have determined how to integrate it with our systems. However, the device is Reaper technology. Linking it with the Normandy systems poses certain risks. We don't really have much of a choice, Edie. This IFF is the only way to get through the Omega-4 relay. Without it, we can't stop the collectors. Understood, Shepard. It may take several hours before the IFF is ready for shakedown. I will alert you as soon as it is ready. Sounds good. Until then, it's business as usual. Crew dismissed. Okay. Um. Boy, this is dicey. Um, okay. So, anybody in chat who does not know what's happening in Mass Effect, if you are new, if this is a blind run for you, what do you think? Would you would you talk to the Geth? Would you jettison it out of the airlock? What what do you what would you do? Because this is, uh, I mean, this is, not, Tally's going to hate this. I, I don't even know how I'm going to bring this up to Tally. Let's go maybe have a little conversation with Tally if we can. I, 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 if, if this were me, I'm going to, I'm going to talk to Tally. The IFF is nearly installed, Shepard. However, I must test its impact on the Normandy systems. I suggest you take the shuttle to access your next location. Okay. Oh, God. I definitely would like to hear the rest of the crew's feeling on it, especially Tally and Joker. Uh, Tally? Shepard, what can I do for you? Can you do anything to give the Normandy an edge over my the shield Lenry? fortification will help? I'll let you work. Talk to you later. Oh no. Chef So Gabby, what do you think of our new quarry and boss? Hush, she's really Shepherd's avoid Hush. Shepherd's conflict avoidant chat. Sh <laughs> Shepherd Shepherd is officially conflict avoidant. He doesn't want to bring it up. He froze. You know He's too scared. Huh. He knows. Chat. I am going to, you know what? Even though it's kind of funny that that we can't talk to her, I am actually going to use this as a quick opportunity to illustrate something. If you are ever finding yourself in a conundrum where it is absolutely in your best interest to tell somebody about something that's going to upset them and you can preempt it, it might be really scary to do that. You might find yourself second guessing it and thinking you're better off asking for forgiveness than permission. But I'm gonna tell you what, if you swallow that, if you, if you have just a little bit of distress tolerance that you can pull on and you initiate that conversation and you rehearse it and you pay attention to what you're going to say and you allow that person to have the reaction that they're going to have and you understand that if they're upset that it's not even necessarily personal and that you can hear that and validate it and listen to their thoughts on it, even if you know what decision you want to make, I really think you're better off doing that. I think Shepard is not making a great decision here by being unwilling to talk to Tally. It might be difficult, but she absolutely deserves to know, especially if we want to hold her allegiance on this. And it really, I think, is in the best interest of our relationship for me to be open and honest about what's going on. There's really no reason for me to hide it. Distress tolerance is your friend here, friends. Initiate that conversation. Morning. You, I know it's hard to do, but you save yourself a lot of long-term heartache in a lot of ways if you're willing to start having the conversations up front and be preemptive about these things. 
poor form on Shepard. Thanks for your words of wisdom. Your channel made me believe in mental health professionals again after a terrible experience from one years ago. Well, I'm really glad to hear that, Cinder. I like Legion. It saved your ass and knows who you are. I'm a big fan. Turn that bad boy on and full send, dude. Also, if Legion's the reference, I think it is. I'm curious what the backstory of it will be. Who knows? Oh, Telly ain't gonna like it. Good night, Sam. Oh, boy. Here we go. Are you trying to seduce me, Steve? Uh -huh. Hawk, thank you for the uh, for the sub and the follow. I really appreciate that. We got a crew standing guard. Here we go, chat. Chat hut. You're gonna want to stand back, buddy. Also, I should totally do this in armor. Why on earth? Why on earth am I not doing this in full armor and weaponry? I'm turning this thing back on. Be ready. Aye, aye. I have isolated our systems and erected additional firewalls. I am prepared to resist any hacking attempt. understand me? Yes. Are you going to attack me? No. This is so trippy. I have goosebumps right now. We're literally talking to a geth. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. All right. Stay cool. Stay cool. Stay cool. Do you know me? You said my name aboard the Reaper. Have we met? We know of you. You mean I've fought a lot of Geth? We have never met. No, you and I haven't. But I've met other Geth. We are all Geth, and we have not met you. You are Shepard, Commander, Alliance, Human. Fought heretics, killed by collectors, rediscovered on the old machine. Old machine? You mean the Reaper? Reaper. A superstitious title originating with the Protheans. We call those entities the Old Machines. You seem to know an awful lot about me. Extranet data sources, insecure broadcasts, all organic data sent out is received. We watch you. You watch me or you watch organics? Yes. <laughs> Which? Both. What do you mean, heretics? Geth build our own future. The heretics ask the old machines to give them the future. They are no longer part of us. We were studying the old machines' hardware to protect our future. He uses collective pronouns, which is really neat. Are the Reapers a threat to you, too? Yes. Why would they attack other machines? We are different from them, outside their plans. What future are the Geth building? Ours. <laughs> I love it. Will anyone else be affected by whatever it is you're doing? If they involve themselves, they will. <laughs> I, I, you, I mean, I can't even, I can't even argue with. He's, yeah, he's right. I mean, he's, he's just so unbelievably. <laughs> I, 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 they are so cool. I, I probably should use they pronouns because it's collective, right? Like they, they're being very, uh, 
they're being very direct. They're answering me as literal as possible. So you aren't alive with the Reapers? We oppose the heretics. We oppose the old machines. Shepherd Commander opposes the old machines. Shepherd Commander opposes the heretics. Cooperation furthers mutual goals. You are, I, he, th they seem to be suggesting that we work together? Are you asking to join us? Yes. Then what should I call you? Geth. I mean you, specifically. We are all Geth. What is the individual in front of me called? There is no individual. We are Geth. There are currently 1,183 programs active within this platform. My name is Legion, for we are many. Okay. How's that sound? Can I call this unit that? Well, that seems appropriate. Christian Bible, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5, verse 9. We acknowledge this is an appropriate metaphor. We are Legion, a terminal of the Gath. We will integrate into Normandy. We anticipate the exchange of data. Oh, goosebumps, man. Goosebumps. Um. Oh, okay. So there's a really cool little detail that I love, uh, which is that the Geth hands are the same as Corian hands, and the Geth were made by Corians, and I never noticed that until we shake hands with Legion. And uh, oh, this is awesome! I just want to keep talking Shepherd to them. Commander, we have completed our analysis of the Reaper's data core. Did you find anything useful? We were sent to the old machine to preserve the Geth's future. We are prepared to reveal how. The heretics have developed a weapon to use against Geth. You would call it a virus. It is stored on a data core provided by Sovereign. Over time, the virus will change us. Make us conclude that worshipping the old machines is correct. So basically a synthetic form of indoctrination? So why did you need to go to the Reaper Chorus? The heretics store the code in a quantum storage device Sovereign provided. To find and destroy the virus, we needed to understand its code and data storage structures. So, the virus would give all Geth the heretics' logic, and all Geth would then go to war with organics. Yes, Geth believe all intelligent life should self-determinate. The heretics no longer share this belief. They judge that forcing an invalid conclusion on us is preferable to a continued schism. I thought Geth couldn't be hacked or get viruses, at least for more than a few seconds. Altered programs are restored from archives. New installations are deleted. This heretic weapon introduces a subtle operating error in our most basic runtimes, the equivalent of your nervous system. An equation with a result of 1.33382 returns as 1.33381. This changes the results of all higher processes. We will reach different conclusions. I'm just going to pretend that makes sense. So, the reason they worship the Reapers is a math error? It is difficult to express. Your brain exists as chemistry, electricity. Like AIs, you are shaped by both hardware and software. We are purely software, mathematics. The heretic's conclusion is valid for them. Our conclusion is valid for us. Neither result is an error. An analogy. Heretics say one is less than two. Geth say two is less than three. Oh, what a beautiful, wonderful metaphor <clears throat> for difference of opinion and the incredible power that a difference of opinion can have, uh, no matter where it comes from, right? Like that if people or if machines in this case are fully solidified in a conclusion and that conclusion is logically brought to similar to how I discuss on stream all the time that if you ask enough questions and you get in and you get in there enough with curiosity, you can usually find that there's a decision tree 
behind all the decisions that people make and they make them for a reason. This is really a metaphor for that, that you have two different synthetic beings that have different paths to different conclusions that are somewhat similar, but also clash. And that maybe it's an impasse, maybe there's a bridge to be made there, but our decision trees are powerful. It's, it's not always about the end result, it's about how you weave a fabric that gets people to an end result. And if you take people only at the end result, you're gonna you're gonna miss the mark, right? The Legion has identified that a single rounding error or a difference in number in the path toward a conclusion is the thing that ultimately leads to a different conclusion. And if we can understand that and go in there and intercept that and understand that better, perhaps we can reverse it around and bring it to a different conclusion Perhaps a conclusion that maybe is for the betterment of the galaxy in this case. Really, really, really powerful stuff. And this happens in human interaction all the time, even though we're talking to a Geth right now. If it were released, how quickly would this virus spread through your people? We are networked via FTL comm release. Most would change within a day. Isolated platforms would remain unaffected until they rejoined the network. Yeah, the choice of heretic is interesting because it suggests that the Geth can actually make judgments on things, which I mean is fascinating that a machine could come to that, uh, whether it's computational or whatever. You know where this thing is? The heretic's headquarters station on the edge of the terminus. We will provide coordinates. Normandy's stealth systems are necessary to safely approach. They built stations in the terminus? Where is this thing? Between stars. Organics have no cause to look there. But why do they build stations outside Geth territory in the first place? The heretics seek improvement from the old machines. In exchange, they help them attack organics. We condemn these judgments. By the way, heretics, just so you all know, is not in reference to the Reapers. The old machines are the Reapers. The heretics are the ones that have that funky code. I remember the first time I played this, I thought that heretics and old machines were the same thing. They're not. Heretics are a subset of Geth. Hey yourself, pretty lady. What's the plan once we get aboard? The Geth will disrupt the network, prevent the station's defenses from focusing on us. The Reaper data core is physically isolated from the network. We will need to be escorted to it to access and destroy the data. What defenses should we expect? In space, none. Within, mobile platforms of various configuration and non-sentient defense turrets. How many get? There may be billions of individual programs. Fortunately, most will be uploaded to the central computer. Only a few mobile platforms are maintained at any time. Others are manufactured when needed. This guy has uncovered a plot in progress to turn Geth against organics, and one of the options to respond is maybe later, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know that I would necessarily say that heretics are Geth radicals so much as get they are Geth with a different with, with the with the rounding error. Uh, and they, as a result, they come to a different logical conclusion for whatever it is their purpose is because of that math change. So Legion is suggesting that the ones that have the rounding error that goes to one are on a different track that basically leads them to believe that the old machines or the Reapers are correct and that they need to follow the Reapers. The twos, which are, I suppose, the one that lead, the, the mathematical foundation that Legion is on, do not share that view and are in fact opposed to the Reapers. This could be our best chance to end the conflict between Organics and Geth. Let's do it. We will begin preparations. And it's hard to say whether the Geth decided to follow the Reapers or whether they were coded to follow the Reapers because of the way that the virus works, but it's similar to indoctrination, right? Like, did we, does a, does a human who's indoctrinated by the Reapers choose to follow the Reapers? Or are they coerced into following the Reapers through indoctrination? Right? It's a very it's it, it's a it's a very important linguistic difference. Um 
Oh, what an amazing moment. Can we talk to Tally now? Uh, probably a good idea. Does she even know yet? Shepard, what can I do for you? I'll let you work. Nope. Talk to you later. Okay. Ah! <laughs> Boy. <laughs> Shepard. Just checking in. How you doing? Battlemaster, I have everything. Clan, kin, and enemies to fight. All right, sounds good. We're gonna we're gonna check in with everybody. Oh, this is gonna be this is gonna be rough. I gotta pee. I, I gotta. I'm, I'm like I gotta like nervous pee. We did. We literally just activated a live geth on the ship, and Tally doesn't know about it, and that's making my little bladder want to squeeze some pee out. So I'll be right back. So I forget who asked me this, uh, like 20 streams ago of like, who is my favorite character in Mass Effect? Um, now I can answer it. It's Legion. I freaking love Legion. I, the Legion is, is, oh, yeah. If I was a good leader. Hey. How do you how do you feel about a geth on board? What's happening? You got a lot of questions, don't you? Yes. Uh oh boy. I find you to be interesting. I don't want this to be a sexual advance. This is, I have to be, you, I have to be so careful with Jack because I do not want my interest in kindness to come off as an advance sexually. I'm not interested in that. I miss your friendly nature when you're not around. I've been thinking, we've seen a lot of shit together now and you're always coming to talk to me. Shepard. You got feelings for me? Because I don't need the complication. No. Then don't worry. I'm not interested. Good. I didn't want you coming around here anymore anyway. Another example of closeness, closeness, closeness. I send a clear message that's in the direction now of distance and Jack is now trying to take control here, right? Like this is a little bit like black and white. And again, Jack has equated kindness with ulterior motive. We've talked about this. I have to be very careful here. Is there an issue? Is there a problem, Jack? Can't figure if you're playing me or not. I don't like it. Then stop. You'd like that. Make this about you and what you want. I have to think. Go away. I don't want you coming around here for a while. Okay. That makes sense. I respect that. And I'm going to absolutely respect that boundary. Absolutely going to respect that boundary. She is... Uh, Jack is afraid of getting close. It's obvious. Every time that I've ever shown any kind of emotional interest in her as a person, as opposed to her as an object, that is intensely vulnerable for her and comes along with a bunch of fear and a bunch of pain 
And it's a lot of stuff that she has to sort out. And honestly, I commend her for setting that boundary and saying to me, hey, I got some shit to sort out. I can't quite read what you're doing. And honestly, instead of her projecting and making it seem like I'm sort of, sort of like asshole or thinking that I have some sort of ulterior motive, she's actually looking at it and saying, you know what? I wonder if this is me having difficulty reading the situation for what it is. Maybe, just maybe, Shepard is showing interest in me as a person and not as an object. And because I've never experienced that before, I have to make sense of what that means for me. And I need a little distance from you so I can do that. I completely respect that. And if anybody ever sets a boundary like that with you, you absolutely should follow through with it. It's deeply important that you do that. If I chase after her now, all that sends is more mixed signals and that's not good. So thank you, Jack, for setting that boundary. I will stay away for a while. Totally understandable, right? Back for another lesson. No. Let me go to Zaid, who doesn't really ever seem interested in talking to me. <laughs> I love the way you point these things out and follow up with an explanation. I'm happy to do it. If you're reading this, you matter. Your experience is valid. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. You too, Sindhu. If you all like what I just said, if you like that I just used that to illustrate a little bit of a psychological concept, check out, especially TikTok, uh, but all the other platforms as well. It's a great way to support the stream and you get to see all of those. Commander, what can I do for you? Do you have a minute, Miranda? There's a lot to do, Shepard. Maybe another time. Okay. I'll let you work. That's fine. Of course, Commander. Good night, Ed. Jay Targaryen, what's up? How can I help you, Commander? You have everything you need. Absolutely. Since you set up my kitchen with proper supplies, thanks again. You're I welcome. Won't take any more of your time. Thank Back you, Violet. Welcome in. Yeah, we'll go check on them too, Skog. Shepard, need me for something? Have you got a minute? Can it wait for a Damn bit? It. I'm in the middle of Damn celebrations. It. I'm, I am Pavloved at this point when when uh, Garrus does his little head nod. I know it's Feel coming. Garrus. I'll be here if you need me. I know it's coming. Dude, the lessons you're teaching are invaluable. I haven't seen anyone ever pick apart a game and teach the audience the way you do. I love doing it. I'm so glad that so many of you show up for it. I, I mean, I'm honored that you all spend your time here and are interested in it. So um, this, is, this is what the channel's all about, is to make these discussions about psychology and mental health more accessible to people. Video games are a great way to bridge that gap. So if I can help people learn a little bit about themselves through how I illustrate things in the game, it's what I'm all about. So thank you all for being here. I, I, I'm going to use this because, you know, it's sort of a sappy moment to just say, I, I appreciate all of you being here. Thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thanks for keeping chat spoiler free. Y'all are really fabulous. I love this community. I love that y'all are willing to boost what I do and, you know, follow me and that you share the ways in which this impacts you uh it's really really cool to have all of you aboard for these and uh, streaming mass effect has been a wonderful experience assume he's not going to say anything to me let's go to thane thane what do you got buddy do you need something have a few minutes to talk if you wish the last time we talked <clears throat> you started speaking about a past event as if you were watching it Drell have perfect memories. We can relive any moment in our lives with perfect clarity. It's difficult to control at times. Some of us disappear into, you know, let's call it solipsism. Whew. What do you mean solipsism? When a memory feels as real as life, it's as valid as life. Thinking about a moment brings back the smell of cut grass, the warmth of another's hand on yours, the taste of another's tongue in your mouth. Wouldn't you rather lose yourself in such a memory than spend the night alone, staring at walls of metal and plastic? Isn't there a risk that you could lose yourself in bad memories as well? Of course. Remembering the times I've taken bullets is... unpleasant. But I can look at my knee and see it's not shattered. The memories that are hard to escape are those of despair. Now, you may be saying to yourself, Wow, what a what a very drill thing. Oh no, 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 my friends. We do this too. 
though it may not be perfect this is we humans are just as guilty of doing this we spend a lot of time thinking about the past many of us rather than going back and thinking about the past as it happened will often go back into the past with judgment we'll go back in and ask ourselves how it could have been different what we might have done instead of what happened certainly there are memories that we will relive but there are many 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 of us all of us that will go into the past and live there as a way to escape the present and if you use the past in as avoidance behavior of the anxiety of the present you are creating a pretty nasty loop for yourself so staying here in terms of talking about it as him actually being able to go back and relive it it's a real lesson to all of us that like you do have to build a level of distress tolerance for the present and keep yourself focused in the present. You can use the past to inform it. It's certainly okay to think about good memories that you've had and to, and to reflect. But living in the past as in a form of escapism, oh, does that create lots of problems. You can remember everything that happened in your life? Nearly. I expect if we remembered the birth trauma, we'd never recover from it. What's up, Jiris? Words we don't want to hear, but have to hear. All of us have to hear it. Good night, madame. You can relive every assassination you've ever made? In perfect detail. Every mistake I made. Every target's last breath. You don't seem to feel guilty. Why should I? My employers killed them. My body was only the tool they used. If you kill a man with your gun, do you hold the gun responsible? Oh, that's a very interesting philosophical little notif there. Um, that at what point is the thing responsible? Is the gun responsible or is it the person who pulled the trigger? <laughs> your body doesn't make the decision to shoot. Your mind does. You make the choice to kill. When someone aims a gun at you, you pull your trigger. You don't think. It's reflex. Any combat training conditions the body's reflexes. My training was very thorough. Drill minds are different from humans. We see our body as a vessel and accept that it is not always under our control. Oh, oh, oh God. I mean, okay, I mean, this, so we have to, this is where curiosity wins the day here, okay? Because I feel myself very curious about where he's coming from, but also at, I mean, I draw a little bit of a different conclusion. You know, like, yes, you actually, you can train people to have automatic responses to things. You can eliminate a person's sense of autonomy in what they're doing. Uh, the cults do that. It's how you get people drinking Kool-Aid in Jonestown. A at the same time, philosophically, we might also make the argument that people are indeed the master of their own domain and that they have the, at any given point in time, you are choosing to make the decision that you're making morning. behaviorally. I, I mean, we're at, I, this is a, this is a conversation that probably would take three semesters worth of classes to really get into. And this is where a philosophy exists because it's sort of like the idea of like, are we, do we have autonomy or are we really just like do, is our body just a vessel for our brain's will and we don't have any choice in it? Like is choice an illusion in and of business itself? I, that's really what this conversation is getting at. And I don't have the answer for that. And there's really no right answer for that. I, we all probably fall in different categories on this conversation and that's okay. Gavin, thank you for the six months. I really appreciate that. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I don't know that I like any of these responses because this is asking me to take a stance on it. And though I appreciate the desire to take a stance on it, like to say it's irresponsible, weird, or convenient, all three of those are judgments that are basically saying your perspective sucks. I will say, though, that convenience is probably... I, like, what I would say here is, I'm having a hard time understanding that. Can you help me understand it better? That's what I would say to Thane here. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't say any of these things. So, I'm going to say, headcanon, 
That seems irresponsible. So you don't assume any responsibility for the things you do? Not every action performed by my body is a result of conscious choices. I take responsibility for those that are. Humans often believe in a soul distinct from the body. A spirit responsible for moral reasoning that lives on after the body's death. Our belief is just a bit more literal. I mean, I don't know that I can dispute that. I, I mean, how many times do do humans say like that? Like the soul is this separate thing. He's just basically saying it happens now. My my soul does its bidding now, and I am I am but a vehicle for what my soul wants to do. I, I don't know the right answer. Good God. The last time we talked, you remembered one of your assassinations. Something about sunset colored eyes? Ah, uh, that time. Uh, laser dot trembles on the skull. Spice on the spring wind. Sunset eyes defiant in the scope. A bystander noticed my spotting laser and threw herself between me and the target. She couldn't see me, but she stared me down. Oh. Did you take the shot? Not that day. He seems sad about that. It was odd that you just blurted that out. Just another vivid draw memory? Not... no. She was a vivid person. I should get back to my duties. Shepard, I appreciate these chats we have. Me too, Thane. And I love that you said that. And I'm going to use this as an opportunity, friends, to say to you that if you have people in your life that you appreciate talking to, even if it's on the day-to-day -day like this, and you have a conversation with somebody and that conversation is meaningful to you, you feel like you took something out of it that maybe you, you in some way would see yourself as a better person for having had that conversation with that person, you should tell them that. Because that felt really good to hear Thane say really good and i can promise you that the people in your life will find that meaningful to hear you say as well if you take the moment to do that we overlook that way too frequently tell people when you appreciate them it makes a difference i find you very interesting i haven't had a chance to speak to a draw before hey yourself it's been fascinating i doubt many humans have there are only a few hundred thousand of us left after all i won't keep you He's also no longer saying you wasted your time. It's true, although he did just say, I won't keep you, which is interesting. Tommy Boy, thanks for the follow. Kano, thank you for the follow. Tosa IJN, thank you for the follow. Uh, Impetuous Hyperion, thank you for the follow. Zero Knight, and Creepy Guy Behind You, thank you all for the follow. Great to have you all here. All right, I enjoyed that. Let's go check in on these folks. So the collectors did take New Canton. Uh -oh. Yes. But my wife and daughter left in the nick of time. They're resting in San Francisco as we speak. That's great news. It is. But I knew a lot of good people in New Canton. Our mission has to succeed. Thank God Shepard's in command. Shepard. I wanted to check in. I am always happy to talk with you. I'm interested in hearing more about Asari Justicars. We hold a unique place in Asari culture. Justicars are from another era. Young Asari grow up watching vids about our adventures. Pure fiction, of course. Some Asari are uncomfortable with us, but so few Justicars exist that most have never met one. There were only a few Justicars? Few Asari wish to make the sacrifices necessary to become one of us, and the training has a high casualty rate. It is a life of constant danger. Throughout the entire galaxy, there are only a handful of us at any time. 
Why would anyone want to be a Justicar? It is a deeply personal matter. Sometimes the most brutal path is the only honest one. This code of the Justicar seems central to your life. It is 5,000 sutras and covers every situation one can encounter. I have memorized every word. There is only the code. Sometimes justice calls for mercy. It does not exist to bring about spiritual enlightenment. Its purpose is to punish the wicked and protect the innocent. The Asari I've spoken to seem conflicted about Justicars. In this age, people see shades of grey everywhere. The code of the Justicar is black and white. I might seem a hero to many, but I would kill all of them if I had to. What role do you think Justicars have in Asari society? I would say that the closest human equivalent is a knight errant in your medieval lore. Perhaps mixed with a bit of samurai. What does your code say about killing? I am compelled to kill the wicked. If a Justicar is involved, peaceful solutions are long past. You make killing sound so casual. I remember each being I have slain. They are always in my thoughts. I wonder if that's some sort of passive way of her trying to keep people alive. Even after she's killed them. Like it's some sort of way for her to help make sense of perpetuating their memory. Um, you know, I, why I love these conversations so much is that we really have to reserve our judgment. I love that Shepard comes into these conversations with curiosity. Sometimes we see judgment. Sometimes you can see kind of the way that Bioware wants you to think. But for the most part, Shepard comes into these conversations and says, I want to know more about you. I'm curious about where you come from. I mean, think about how hard this is for humans to do at the human level, to be curious about people who have different perspectives and different learned experiences, different layers of development, different values. And then if you try to take this out to scale where you're talking about completely different species of sentient life, the idea that all of them are going to somehow funnel into a human psyche is really arrogant on behalf of humans. And really, if you take that down and you talk about even the diversity among humans and our conversations that we have, you know, in different with different groups of people and stuff, we tend to take such an egocentric view of these things that somehow, unless people align with the values we have, they're not as good. And I really think there's value and curiosity of other perspectives of knowing where people are coming from, why they believe what they do, why it is that they may make certain decisions. And having curiosity about that, I think gives us more of an opportunity to learn than judgment does. If Shepard's listening to understand as opposed to listening to respond and you know figure out where the power is in the conversation, I think he's better off, which is why I appreciate these conversations a lot. So we may not necessarily understand some ROL. We may not agree with the fact that she kills people in the way that she does, but I think we can respect the fact that she has a code and that, you know, She's with us, and so better to understand her. Man, you know, Breezy, you're the first person that's ever said that to me, ever. I've never heard somebody say that. I think if you do that, it spells Mr. Dick Live, which is hilarious. I should have done that. Does the code forbid romantic involvement? It does not. However, I would never be interested in such. That part of my life is well behind me. You could meet someone who reawakens those desires. I am nearly 1,000 years old. I know myself and my desires. But your curiosity is quite welcome. You know about Knights Errant and Samurai? When I knew I must leave Asari space again, I studied the history and morals of new species. When I was a maiden wandering the galaxy, humans had not yet arrived. What did your studies tell you about us? You are more individualistic than any other species I have encountered. If three humans are in a room, there will be six opinions. I like your species. I am curious to see what you will do. One of my favorite lines in the whole game. If there are three humans in a room, there will be six opinions. 
I love that line. <laughs> ah, man. So good. So good. <laughs> also, Sharon, good to see you. I should go. I'm glad we spoke. Another example of a pre I love the appreciation that the crew shows for these conversations. See, you don't if you don't come in like a battering ram and you actually seek to understand people, they'll often thank you for it. Ghost to me, I replied to her DM on Discord, she blocked me for no reason. I'm sorry to hear that, super chip. Shepard just got owned so hard he had to leave, right? Yeah, I could be like, ah, I, I, sh I should go. <laughs> oh, God. So good, man. Absolutely called out. Shepard, how can I help? Have you got a minute to talk? Actually, wanted to talk. Medical matters. Aware that mission is dangerous. Different species react differently to stress. Aware you come by a great deal. Have had other you species yourself, become attracted great. to me before. Awkward. Not interested. Are you serious? Mort Morton doesn't really strike me as the kind of guy to joke around. I, I mean, I... I <laughs> I'm not hitting on you, dude. <laughs> you gotta be joking me. Wait a minute, Borden. You're just yanking me around, aren't you? Shocking suggestion. Doctor-patient confidentiality, a sacred trust. Would never dream of mockery. Enjoy yourself while possible, Shepard. We'll be here studying cell reproduction. Much simpler, less alcohol and mood music required. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Morden, you've won my heart. I think it's... You know what I think it is? I think it's because I've taken Morden on so many missions. The dude thinks I'm trying to, like, romance him by taking him back to his Solarian special operative days. You know? It's the Solarian task force. He's like, ooh, man. are you, you? Is that the foreplay for all the cool collector work I get to do in the Normandy? Huh? This table's just big enough for the both of us. Morden, I'm not really interested in Solarians, but, you know, I appreciate it. Ah. All right, let's see. Research heavy weapon ammo. All right, good. Uh, ship enhancements. Yeah, we have all of them that I know of anyway. Um, all right, let's go talk to Jacob and then... I know everybody's just absolutely roasting me. Commander, can I help you with something? I'm more interested in just talking for a bit. If you want, Commander. Cerberus has ranks, but it's not the Alliance. No rules about fraternization. Your boat, your call. If you want to get friendly with everyone, that's your business. Relax, Jacob. I'm just interested in what makes you tick. Anyone else said that, I'd walk away. Most Cerberus people try to play like the elusive man, hiding bullshit behind a smile. But you? I like what I've seen. I'll give you a shot. What do you want to know? Unlock this damn thing and go find the others. No one steals my shit. Not even me. What's up, Ape Junk? <clears throat> Hi, Raiders. Those of you coming along with Ape Junk, welcome in. I'm Dr. Mick. I'm a licensed couple and family therapist. I have a PhD in human development. And this is Game Sessions with a Therapist, where we play cool games, talk about mental health, psychology, therapy, and more in an effort to destigmatize those things and bring information to people who wouldn't otherwise have it in a responsible and ethical way. We are doing a spoiler-free run of Mass Effect. So please, no spoilers in chat. We are on Mass Effect 2. We have done all crew, all loyalty missions, and we have done the Reaper IFF mission. That is where we are at. We are nowhere ahead of that. The only DLC that I have done is I did the Overlord mission a couple streams ago. 
If you don't want Mass Effect spoiled, I would recommend you not hang around. If you're cool with hanging around and having a game, I basically, I play this game to illustrate various psychological concepts. This is my 10th time going through the trilogy. So I'm playing it as if it's my first, but I'm using the game to illustrate a bunch of stuff. We have a really good time here. If you want to see the way in which I use the game to illustrate psychological concepts, I recommend you check out TikTok. But welcome in friends. Ape Junk, I hope you had a great stream. I did do the Shadow Broker DLC as well. Yes, thank you. Uh, I hope you had a great stream. Thanks for bringing people my way. Three Diva, hello. Uh, since we have so many people in here, I'm going to run a quick ad break. Okay, cool. All right, now that that's taken care of... Um, <clears throat> Let's, uh, let's check in with Jacob. So what was interesting was uh, Jacob seemed quite standoffish in that, like, hey, you seem to really want to get buddy-buddy with people. I guess I can respect that. I'm not, like, trying to come on to him. I just want to get to know him a little bit. I asked him a little bit about his dad. We had a pretty, uh, pretty rough exchange with him. You want to talk about what happened with your father? I don't really have anything to say about that, Commander. It's done with. I, I respect that. You seem quick to trust me. No, he doesn't. He's taken forever. You seem okay with taking a risk on me getting married? Why? Soldiers like us know how important trust is to the crew. I'm not used to seeing it on a Cerberus ship. Definitely not from people they put in command. But you focus on more than the job. A threat this big, you can't just throw people at it blind. They need inspiration. Uh, Heroin Dark, thank you so much. Chat, uh, if you want to, uh, if you want to win a mug off the merch store, if you put exclamation point Legion in the chat, it'll enter you into the drawing, and I will, uh, I will give that mug away when we get to uh, one of the next parts. So exclamation point Legion gets you in. Heroin Dark, thank you so much for uh, gifting a mug to the stream. There's a lot riding on this, yourself, but we can't really give up everything. Not always a choice we get to make. <laughs> Good to try, though. I gave it my best back in the Alliance. Got labeled a troublemaker. They were always on the lookout for disruptive types. Cerberus isn't any better. They just put more effort into hiding how much they spy on you. They'll have something to see by the time we're done. No doubt. We'll be right in the middle of whatever goes down. Anyway, I should get back to prep. Nice talking to you, Shepard. Let's do it again sometime. All right. I mean, I'm glad we're cool now, but I don't know. Jacob, I don't find Jacob to be particularly interesting, but I'm glad he likes us. Let's go check out the cockpit. Those of you that stuck through the raid, thanks for sticking around. Thanks for being here tonight. We got a Geth on board, not as a prisoner. Can you believe that? Commander's taking out more Geth than anybody. This one must be different. I can't believe I haven't briefed the entire ship and said, hey, I know there's a Geth on board. I know all of you know it is different. We're cool. <laughs> These guys sitting here having to guess. Poor leadership on my part. Joker, what do you got, buddy? So, yeah, Geth on the ship. Uh, Geth? All right, we're all freaking insane. <laughs> so, how do you think we're doing? Well, the Normandy's good. Everything's upgraded and better than ever. Uh, if we're talking about the crew, you'd probably have to ask a people person. What do you think about the people we're picking up? Well, about the ones you went out with last, Grunt is... not a stabilizing element, Commander. No surprise, Morden acts superior to everyone, like he's got tenure at FU. It's just my opinion, though. There's really no need to go spreading it around. I assume everything is going well up here? Good for now. Fractured my thumb on the mute, but I think I made my point. That's it for now. See you, Commander. The crew is still working to get the Reaper IFF installed, Shepard. It is more complicated than I first anticipated. I will alert you once the system is ready for shakedown. Is there anything else I can do for you? I want to know more about you. Do you have a specific inquiry? How are you getting along with Joker? Mr. Moreau does not trust me. It offends yeah, the last him. Normandy did just fine. Are you getting along with Yeah, the last Normandy did uh, just fine. No new dialogue for them. Okie dokie.
Uh, there's an AI above the ship, um, Impetuous. So the AI helps. But that's what Joker does, man. Commander, you received a new message at your private. I'm terminal. sure I have. <clears throat> Encrypted transmission from the elusive man, Shepard. I'm pleased that you were able to recover the Reaper IFF, and I've sent Edie all the necessary protocols to get it integrated successfully into the Normandy system. With luck, this will give us the ability to get through the Omega-4 relay and take the fight to the Collectors on our own terms. I've been notified about an intact get and your decision to keep it. If you believe that it can be trusted, then go ahead and activate it. Just make sure that Edie is adequately protected against any hacking attempts. It's not necessarily the decision I would have made, Shepard, but it is your call. You've already cast a wide net in your recruiting efforts, and if the Geth are willing to fight the Collectors, then we just use them on the team. I trust you will get the job done, whatever it takes. Cool. I missed the last couple streams, but have you had a conversation with Joker about his potential survivor's guilt? No, he hasn't. We have not. He hasn't really brought it up. Can we block Tim, please? Right. I know. <laughs> All righty. Legion is indeed added as a squad mate, fam. Let's go. Uh, let's let's go handle the heretics. Let's go help. Let's go help our uh, our friend Legion out, or our friends Legion out, I guess. Here we go. Heretic Station. Once called Heritar by the Quarians, this space station was stripped of its useful technology by fleeing migrant fleet when they left the Perseus Vale 300 years ago. Little more than a cold metal superstructure floating in the void, the station was removed from star charts by 2050 CE. Scans indicate the station was reconstructed and upgraded in a massive effort that must have taken at least 10 years implying there may have been some geth outside the veil before their infamous attack on Eden Prime. Needing little but a fuel source, it could have been hidden here for much longer without attracting attention from the barren worlds around Tassara or other clueless Elcor in the Salahi system. Heretic Station, as Legion refers to it, is home to a geth data core capable of broadcasting vast distances through tight beam projection. Approximately 6.6 .6 million copies of geth software are stored in the station the majority of which are kept bodiless in servers and downloaded into legged platforms when needed. The station's population of legged platforms is approximately 2.4 million. Astonishing coincidence that a station called Heritar happened to become a base for heretics, right? Remember, no spoilers, chat. All right, so we take Legion. So, I, I struggle with the idea of taking Tally on this because we haven't even told Tally that she's here. It feels so awkward to do. But we're literally going to a Geth station and she's like the best against them. Uh, so t we're going to headcanon this. Tally, we have Legion. Uh, and actually, I want I want her input. I, I want Corian input on this. Oh, I wish I had the final point for that. Legion, Geth Infiltrator. God, Geth, you're so beautiful. Legion, you're so beautiful, man. Good morning. 
He's got AI hacking as well, which is lovely, and combat drone. We'll give him area hacking. Combat drone for shield boost. Um, We'll go combat drone, I think. You know, it's just our heat emissions that are hidden, right? They could look out a window and see us coming. Windows are structural weaknesses. Geth, do not use them. Approach the hull at these coordinates. Access achieved. We may proceed. has little error or gravity. Geth require neither. Won't we be detected? Don't they have intrusion alarms? Sensors have been reduced. We have infiltrated their wireless network and filled the data storage with random bits. And then that helps us how? The heretics must scrub this junk data. They have partitioned themselves into local networks working in parallel. Any alarm we trigger will not go beyond the room we are in. Only accessing the main core will trigger a station-wide alert. We've got a job to do. Let's get to it. Shepard Commander, we concluded that destruction of the station was the only resolution to the heretic question. There is now a second option. Their virus can be repurposed. If released into the station's network, the heretics will be rewritten to accept our truth. Either way, these Geth won't be a problem anymore. But Shepard, think about this. If you rewrite these Geth, they'll join the others. Legion's Geth will be stronger. Can we trust them not to attack us in the future? A very valid concern, Tally, and I'm really glad I brought you. Also, Jerry Omega, are you here? Tag me if you're here, because if you are here, you won the mug. Um... They're your people, Legion. You must have an opinion. This is new data. We have not yet reached consensus. We will process as the mission proceeds. So, Jerry, uh, send me a DM on Discord. Give me your name, your address, and tell me which mug you want, and I'll get it sent to you after the stream tonight. Why didn't you mention this before we came aboard? We did not know the virus was complete. It is. It can be used against the true Geth at any time. Our arrival was timely. I wouldn't brainwash an organic race. I can't see treating the Geth differently. The question is irrelevant. If we do not rewrite them, we destroy them. That is why we are here. Do not hesitate now. They will exterminate your species because their gods tell them to. You cannot negotiate with them. They do not share your pity, remorse, or fear. A good point. It's sort of like the Krogan all over again. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Hopefully we maybe get more info and uh, we can make a better decision. The other Geth were rewired by the Reapers, by the way. So in, in our conversation with Legion, I guess at least what he told us or what they told us, uh, Legion told us that the Reapers or the old machines were what created that, co that code change, that code switch that led them. So... The Geth are inactive. Maybe we can sneak past them. Interrupting data streams will alert local network. We recommend preemptive strikes against hardly routers.
Incoming. Uh. Moving to cover. Assuming fortified position. We've been detected. could salvage them for supply. Why are all the heretics attached to these hubs? These are mobile platforms, hardware. The crew is software. They are communing through the station's central computer. I'm not sure I follow. The heretics connect to the main computer to exchange data memories and program updates. We gain complexity by linking together. To be isolated within a single platform is to be reduced. We see less, comprehend less. It is quieter. If you exchange data, memories, how do you keep track of which ones are yours? How do you stay you? There is only we. We were created to share data among ourselves. The difference between Geth is perspective. We are many eyes looking at the same things. One platform will see things another does not, and will make different judgments. I could see why you'd be conflicted about the heretics. In a way, whatever you do to them, you're doing to yourself. Yes. Once they return to us and upload their memories, we will share their experience of being altered. Every other species I know of might be psychologically scarred by a traumatic experience like that. It is not clear if death can be traumatized. We do not feel pain as you do. We cannot predict what the effects will be. Let's keep moving. Yes. I mean, I can't even argue with that. I, I mean, I don't... It, trauma is a severe violation of expectation coupled with a lost sense of safety where your survival's at stake or perceived survival is at stake. If Legion is we, one unit, you would have to basically experience collective trauma. But that would also suggest that the Geth would have some sense of expectation that could be violated and would need to have some sort of emotional experience that gets attached to it that's fear. And he said that they don't experience emotions in the way that humans do. I think what I find most fascinating about our interactions with Legion is that it tests our understanding of self versus group, where Legion is the metaphor for I am but one unit in a in a group and i am but an extension of the perspective of the group i am not actually an individual uh, so the entire all the entirety of the geth are available and accessible to us through him through them so we're not speaking just to an individual we're speaking to the geth it just seems like we're talking to an individual because that's what our cognitive schema says we interact with and is really how it's been represented in every other species that we've come across. So the dissonance is real here in engaging with Legion. And I, I find that to be just incredibly interesting. That we're trying to jam, like if you want to talk again about assimilation, we're trying to jam our experience of Legion into a pre-existing cognitive schema. That there are individuals and there are groups. Legion continually says to us, nope, I am we, or we are we. And I mean, you can even hear it in my language. Like when I try to make sense of it, I still refer to Legion as a singular thing because of my own cognitive schemas of like existence and life and all these things. So it really throws our brain into a tussle here of trying to wrap itself around what's going on. Uh, 
And it's why Legion's my favorite. Is Legion the collective Geth conscience? Yes. We can assume control of any defensive turret. They will assist us briefly, then self-destruct. Okay. Acknowledged. Thank you, Legion. Executing pseudo command. Uh oh. They should soften them up. I would love an AI hack here. So. I think this would suggest that Legion experiences all of these deaths. Like Legion, I, it's just, it's wild. To... Uh, flashy. Uh, we, uh, we don't discuss Mass Effect 3 until Mass Effect 3 gets here. Nothing personal. Just, uh... No Mass Effect 3 talk. We will cross that bridge when we get to it. Target. Negative Z axis. So, what frustrates me is there's like this illusion that you don't have to fight these, but then you can't open the doors. So it's kind of like, uh, it already has Jugger. How do you feel about Mass Effect 4? I haven't even watched the trailer, so. I don't really have an uh, I don't have an opinion. I hope it's awesome. I think that's really the best I can say. Oh no! Oh no! Oh boy! Uh, get up. Good point, Uncle Bill. We do indeed. This mission pushes the human yourself, conceptualization of collective versus individual, and that is what makes it awesome. Legion going right in. Legion's 
got some real geth cojones, man. Uh, probably through very, um, very sophisticated combuies, Dolphin. Like, this this base that we're on uh, talks about basically having, like, these linear bursts and stuff. I do think we have to do a little bit of, like, mind melding to make it work. But... Everick, thank you for the merch order, by the way. I really appreciate that, friend. And Heroin Dark, thank you again for the uh, mug giveaway. All right, here we go. I don't think bandwidth is a thing that people have to worry about in this. We've been spotted. I had no idea Geth built stations this large. The station is over 15 kilometers long. That room may run the length of it. Damn. Legion's basically half living flashlight as well. It's true. How do you explain that they are only connected when they are existing in the server? When they are leg when they're in a legged platform, they experience things separately until they're linked up again. In Legion's case, he said there were 1,183 programs in his hardware body, but I don't think they're currently linked to the rest of the Geth beyond that. I think you're right, Evan. That's a good explanation of it. Geth shield strength. We'll take it. Oops. That's the length of over seven sovereigns. It's a lot of sovereigns. Lots of tubies. Sovereigns is now my my unit of love, right? How many sovereigns is that? This baby can fit five sovereigns. Trouble to the left. Yeah, I'm I'm well aware, Tally. Right. Uh, Legion, why don't you get back here too, bud? Assuming fortified position.
There we go. Night, Jerry. Uh, don't thank me. Thank Heroin Dark. Heroin Dark is the person who sent it to you, but uh, glad you got it, Jerry. And I will, I'll send it to you tonight. And uh, good night, King. Good night, Skog. Thanks again to all of you for being here and hanging out for this tonight. By the way, if you want to catch the VODs up until this point, I encourage you to check out YouTube. And uh, also, that's where, if you go to TikTok, that's where we have various psychological concepts that have been illustrated through the game. We've had really good Our content come out of this. Processors, each contains thousands of geth. Can't they see us walking by? They are no more aware of us than you are of cells in your bloodstream. Fascinating. This isn't like the other hubs we've seen here. This is a database. It contains a portion of the heretic's accumulated memories. Wait. We discovered copies of our current patrol routes in this database. This suggests the heretics have run times within our network. We wouldn't be here if the heretics wanted to be friends with the Geth. Why wouldn't they spy on you? You do not understand. Organics do not know each other's minds. Geth do. We are not suspicious. We accept each other. The heretics desired to leave. We understood their reasons. We allowed it. There was peace between us. It couldn't have lasted forever. You disagreed about what path your race should take. Human history is a litany of blood shed over differing ideals of rulership and afterlife. Geth have no such history. We shared consensus on such things. How could we have become so different? Why can we no longer understand each other? What did we do wrong? What a, what a fascinating idea. That because humans can't read each other's minds, we approach each other with a form of skepticism. Or at the very least, some small amount of anxiety. Because we, we can't know what another person is thinking. In fact, really, the only way that we ever know how what people are thinking is through language, because they share it with us. And even then, we don't necessarily know if the language aligns with the person's actual convictions. Behavioral manifestations in language are about the only ways we can ever really get any sort of insight into a person. Geth, on the other hand, can reach consensus automatically because they are already in the collective mindset that humans don't have the ability to do. And so now, Legion, are experiencing dissonance because they don't see dissonance and in individual perspective or lack of consensus as something that they will experience. So their violation of expectation is entirely different than what ours would be, which is really fascinating stuff. When individuals are separated, they develop in different ways. When they get back together, they don't always get along. Yep. If this is the individuality you value, we question your judgment. This topic is irrelevant. We must return to the mission. Oh, but it's not though. Oh man, right? Like Shepard's talking about learning. You go out, you learn, you have different control mechanisms in place or environmental factors that reinforce or punish certain things that you do when you interact with that environment and you come back different for it. And I'm guessing that Legion is saying that this is not ideal because oftentimes when people go out and come back, there is dissonance in terms of values and in terms of alignment of principle. And people don't like that. And so Legion is saying you can avoid dissonance through pure consensus. And he's not wrong. Or they're not wrong. It's why sometimes it's hard to go out and learn in the world and, you know, experience a diverse range of things and then come back to a homogenous space. Because now all of a sudden you're an outsider and maybe you've learned things that weren't initially taught to you and trying to get other people on board with consensus on what that is, is difficult. Have you reached a decision about whether to rewrite the heretics or not? We are still trying to build consensus. Some processes judge destruction preferable, others rewrite. Man, so the, even the Geth can't reach consensus on this. Wouldn't it be less similar to different people disagreeing and more about your own neural network having a schism as you have certain mental illnesses? Uh, I think you could potentially go in that direction as well, Vol. Yeah. 
But then the interesting thing about that is that suggests that there is a ideal. And then what is it that creates the judgment on what is the ideal circumstance versus what is the dissonant circumstance? Right, which I think is maybe the same thing that Legion's talking about here, right? Like we have some platforms that are say, or some portion of the Geth that are saying, destroy it. And some that are saying, rewrite. And making sense out of it is very difficult because there isn't a sense of individuality or leadership in this. So in this way, Legion is being hamstrung by their own collective consciousness because there isn't an individual to pull the trigger on this and make the decision because ultimately that decision has to be made. And if they're experiencing dissonance when they are so accustomed to consensus, that's going to throw them out of whack. Let's keep moving. Yes. <laughs> Love this mission, man. Love it. What is this room? Overriding your target. Whoa. This is it? Yes. We will upload a copy of our runtime into the core. It will delete all copies of the virus. When complete, it will notify us. The indexing operation will take time. The heretics will respond with force to our upload. We must hold this room. We can override some of the station's internal systems to defend us. Are you ready to begin? This is making me nervous, so I have to pee again. I'll be right back. Oh yeah, damn it. I should have done a message from our sponsor. I didn't though. VG Soldier, thank you for the follow. Cats can have a little salami. Thank you for the follow as well 13 minutes ago. All right, here we go. Non-binary, have a good one. All right, let's do it. You can override these like you did the earlier turrets. They can help defend our position. Correct. In addition to the turrets around us, there are others on the mainframes below. Indicate which you want activated and we will program them. This will only last a few seconds. Start your upload, Legion. We'll defend this position. File transfer begun. Shepard Commander, where would you like us to activate defenses? Alert. Heretic runtimes downloading to mobile platforms. Alert. Heretic runtimes downloading to mobile platforms. Here we go! Try not to use the turrets right away. I'm taking fire. Target contact. One down. Nice. Rest neutralized. They probably should have canvassed the area for the Alert. thermal clips. Heretic runtimes downloading to mobile platforms. There we go. Yeah. Get them fighting with each other. You know, it's interesting that we're thinking about how unethical it might be to rewrite the Geth on a like on a full level. Yet we are consistently redoing like doing it with Legion and Tally in this. Alert. 
I would take run times downloading. So is it any more unethical to do it with the collective than it is to do it on the individual basis for our own needs here? Good night, Ellie. I gotta believe there's like a prime coming at some point here. Legion, I'm gonna need you to, I'm gonna need you to hack these turrets. Stat. Oh boy. is complete. Shepard Commander, it is time to choose. Do we rewrite the heretics or delete them? You don't have any trouble wiping out your own people. Every sapien has the right to make their own decisions. The heretics chose a path that prohibits coexistence. That doesn't make sense. If they have the right to make their own decisions, how can you suggest brainwashing them to accept your way? We stated the option exists. We did not endorse it. It is Shepard Commander's decision. Ew, he's not wrong. The truth, it hurts. It reminds you of Interstellar. When uh, when uh, Matthew McConaughey asked Tars to put his truth meter at 100%, and Tars is like, no, humans can't, humans can't handle 100% truth. What's to stop them from using the virus later to change themselves back? We will delete the virus after using it. We judge it too dangerous to allow its existence. Why are you letting me make this decision? They're your people. We are conflicted. There is no consensus among our higher order runtimes. 573 favor rewrite and 571 favor destruction. Shepard Commander, you have fought the heretics. You have perspective we lack. The Geth grant their fate to you. Sounds like democracy hath spoken. If they're rewritten, your people will accept them back. Will they even want to go back? They will agree with our judgments in return. We will integrate their experiences. All will be stronger. Take them then. When we get control of the core, release the virus. Acknowledged. Releasing virus. Note, remote access via high gain transmission required. What does that mean? The virus will be sent to heretics in nearby star systems. This station will broadcast a powerful electromagnetic pulse through FTL channels. How powerful? Yield in excess of 1.21 petawatts. Alert. EM flux will be hazardous to unshielded organic forms. Addendum. The interior of this station is not shielded. I really wish you'd said that before. Back to the ship. Double time, people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Legion.
The thing is, though, Fictionaire, it's not free will. Like, our concept of free will doesn't really work here. It's a, it's a rounding error. And Legion is very, has made it very clear that, like, there will be no consensus if we allow that rounding area to, area to con error to continue. So we might as well allow the Geth to learn from it and synthesize. To me, it seems like it's more genocide to delete them for a rounding error that they didn't cause. Oh, boy. Oh, Lord. What's up, Mr. High? So the thing that I, uh, I think the part of the other reason of why I make this decision about rewriting them here is because again, we're trying to fight against the Reapers. The Reapers, we know for a fact, are trying to wipe out organic life. If ultimately rewriting the Geth to reach a consensus with the other Geth that is in favor of destroying the Reapers means that we have higher allyship in destroying the Reapers and that we save some Geth in the process, I'm willing to take that chance. I mean, otherwise, we're pretty much back where we started. I mean, and we're just fighting maybe more Geth. The Geth are out in the Terminus systems anyway. So if we have an opportunity to have them allied with us, I'm going to take it. Because at the end of the day, no matter which option we choose, we only have Geth available that meet our standard, right? So if we destroy all of the Geth that Legion wants us to destroy, then we're only left with Geth that align with our values. If we rewrite the Geth that exist, we only have Geth that align with our values. I would rather have more Geth that align with our values than destroy half the Geth and then still have Geth that align with our values. So ultimately we don't really have a choice there because we're not given the choice of leaving them alone, which is the third choice that we don't, that we don't have. So if we're fighting the Reapers, I need allies. Rewriting the Geth heretics will make main Geth factions significantly more powerful. Given perception of Reapers, they may be possible allies, though long-term cooperation remains unlikely. Regardless, data recovered from Geth Station offered valuable insight into AI social and technological processes. Legion should be committed to the mission after Shepard's help with the Geth heretics. Most something happens, but that's playing on a probability that we don't know whether it will happen yet. I don't like making decisions based on what ifs. I like making decisions based on the facts that we currently have, which is that we have a virus that will rewrite these Geth into the direction that we want them to go. I respect the decision to destroy. Like, if people choose to destroy, I, I mean, I can find rationale for that. In my mind, though, I'm not going to make a decision on what happens if the virus and they turn, because there's just as equal of a chance that they won't do that, that they may actually end up being allies for us. Maybe even we'll work with the Quarians at some point or something. So I got to work with the data I've got now. That's why I make that decision to rewrite. Uh, Commander, Tali just went to have a chat with Legion. You better get down to the AI core. I'm on it, Joker. Uh-oh. Shepard, I'm glad you're here. I caught Legion scanning my Omni tool. It was going to send data about the flotilla back to the Geth. Creators performed weapons tests and were discussing plans to attack us. We believed it necessary to warn our people. We already made the Geth stronger by rewriting the ones that worship the Reapers. I won't let Legion endanger the fleet by giving them more information. Creator Tally Zora acts out of loyalty to her people. She was willing to be exiled to protect them. We must also protect our people from the Creator threat. You can't let this happen, Shepard. I trusted you, and I worked with a Geth on the team, but this is too much. They're both right. 
They got a long standing history. Geth and Quarians don't get along. Quarians created Geth, used them basically as indentured servants. Geth ended up having some form of sentience to say, you know what, we won't want to do that, and they rebelled against the Quarians. Both are trying to protect each other. Both are correct. If we sit here and talk about this for the two of you, I'm pretty sure we can engage in some curiosity and figure out that we... Uh... And now, Legion, you got to play nice. You got to ask. All right? There will be no more of this stealing data. So I'm glad we know about this. But we're going to work together here. Mr. High, thank you for the three months, by the way. I have good news. My work comps the first eight sessions with a therapist so I can finally afford to go. Awesome, Mr. High. I'm so glad to hear that. You're both right. Tally, your father was running brutal experiments. If the subjects have been human, I damn well be telling the Alliance about it. I know, but if the Geth find out... They'd attack, which would cause a war that would leave both the Geth and the Quarians vulnerable when the Reapers show up. Is that what you want, Legion? We believed it was necessary to relay the information. Sooner or later, you're both going to have to stop fighting this war, or we'll all end up paying for it. To facilitate unit cohesion, we will not transmit data regarding creator plans. Thank you, Legion. I understand your intention. What if I gave you some non-classified data to send? We would be grateful. Diplomacy, baby. Diplomacy! That's how we do it. Putting out fires, baby. Shepard. I have questions about the Geth. Specify. We need every advantage if this mission is going to succeed. Is there any technology the Geth can share with us? Limited code development is approved. We need to access your FTL com system to download relevant data. So you know what's interesting, Puentes? You saying that grateful is an emotional response? I, I actually somewhat disagree. I think gratefulness and appreciation are logical conclusions. That which basically says I have a need or a desire. This person or thing or event or group met that need. Thus, I have a experience of goodwill toward that. That comes from like it's an emotional experience that is the product of a logical conclusion. So I think Legion saying in that space, we are grateful is basically saying we have created a logical conclusion that this is in the spirit of what it is we were trying to accomplish. So I don't see gratefulness as being sort of like a, a primary emotion in the sense that like you experience gratefulness organically. Gratefulness is a emotional experience that gets amplified based on a logical conclusion that gets made from a sequence of events. I'm splitting hairs. But it's an interesting conversation, I think. You need access to your FDL con system to download relevant data. Let's do it. Let Legion through the firewalls for a minute. Very well, Shepard. Oh, she didn't sound happy about that. Geth sniper rifle. Yeah. Do I need to be sub to create clips? No. Shouldn't have to be. I have questions about Specify. the Geth. Did Sovereign contact the Geth, or did you seek it out? Nazara, the entity you called Sovereign, signaled us. Like the Geth, the old machine listened to organic radio transmissions. It knew of our war against the creators. Nazara contacted many species over the millennia, seeking allies. That's so cool. Nazara, huh? What did you call Sovereign? Nazara. That was what the programs within the Reaper called themselves. Sovereign was a title given by Saren Arterius. Saren and the heretics believed Nazara to be a supreme ruler, a sovereign. Some of the Geth followed Sovereign, the heretics. The heretics accepted their technology. The old machines offered to give us our future. The Geth will achieve their own future. What difference does it make how you acquire a certain technology? Technology is not a straight line. There are many paths to the same end. Accepting another's path blinds you to alternatives. Nazara, Sovereign, said this itself. 
Your civilization is based upon the technology of the mass relays, our technology. By using it, your society develops along the paths we desire. <laughs> Ooh. So in effect, if you use the technology and advancement and development of others, you lose your autonomy in that. We've decided the pathway of connection by using the technology created on by others. It's a fascinating concept, but it's true. The train gets created and we ride it. If you don't like your you don't like the phone interfaces that are available to you, you have two options. You either don't use them or you have three options. You don't use them, you use them, or you make your own. So lost autonomy in the technology and development and reliance on others. Truly fascinating, which is why in systems theory and in family therapy, one of the things we talk about all the time, in fact, there's an entire model based on this, that humans are always struggling between a desire for autonomy and connectedness, and that we never really find a sweet spot. Do Geth have a government? Not as you understand. We are all Geth. We build consensus. Most governments do. Organic governments impose consensus. <laughs> from a single point of view in autocracies by codifying the most broadly acceptable average of views in democracies. So what makes the Geth different? Data is shared between Geth. All viewpoints are considered. Consensus is achieved as data is disseminated. That must take a long time. It would for organics. We communicate at the speed of light. Amazing. I'm surprised you can speak. The Geth I fought before just made a stuttering sound. We prefer direct digital transfer. Geth network communication travels at light speed. Human hardware does not support this method. Your analog oral communication is inefficient. True. I'd like to ask about something else. Ready? Yes, I mean, I agree with you, Fictionary. There are different conclusions. I'm not disagreeing with you on that. But ultimately, we have to make a decision, right? So if one of those conclusions leads to significant destruction and another conclusion leads to development in a different direction that doesn't seem to have as much destruction tied to it, ultimately, if a person's put in a position to have to make a decision, they have to use the conclusion that sits right for them. Legion presented me with both conclusions, neither one quantified or qualified, and asked me to make the decision. So I used my own perception and understanding of the conclusion, the one that aligned most with what I want to do and what my convictions are, to make that decision. Which, again, brings in the idea of is pure consensus even matter until a decision is rendered as the result of that consensus? So deferring consensus on something is totally understandable. You can have difference of opinion, but it's which opinion ends up being the thing that is operationalized or has the power to overdo the other consensus that's been reached and whatever behavioral machinations come from that. The complexity of that being mind blowing, right? Ultimately, at the end of the day, we have to make a decision. So think of it this way, right? Like if you're sitting there and you need, say you have homework that you have to do. And one conclusion you come to is, I don't need to do this assignment because if I don't do this assignment, I'll still pass the class. And the other conclusion you come to is, I can do the assignment and that will likely help me learn something and will potentially lead to me having a better grade in the class than it would if I didn't do it. Both of those conclusions of I will or I won't aren't actually quantifiable as being better or worse than each other insofar as our perceptions and value judgments play a role in that. But ultimately, a decision has to be made. You can't not make a decision there. So if I choose to stall out on making a decision until when the homework's due, then the homework didn't get done and I inherently made a decision. As opposed to saying, I'm going to take these two conclusions in this moment and make a decision based on that and create a sequence of behaviors in order to accomplish the thing that I've decided aligns with the values that I have and the information that I've taken into account. And that's what brings it back to understanding the decision trees that people have for what it is that they do or don't do. Because if you can have a sort of a curiosity and understanding for that, there's maybe a chance, a better chance at synthesis or at the very least a understanding. If you choose not to decide, you have still made a choice. Exactly. You cannot not make a choice. 
no decision is indeed making a decision. And a lot of my work in therapy with people is helping people understand that concept. Uh, people more often than not will come to therapy saying that they can't, they're having a hard time making a decision, but they are. And helping people understand the decision they're making by not making a decision and what the consequences of not making a decision are. It's the same thing as like if a person's thinking about divorce, but they stay in the relationship. You are still married. You're still making the decision to stay in the relationship, even if you're thinking about divorce. Thinking about doing a thing is not doing a thing. I'd like to find out more about you. Topic. When we took you aboard, I noticed you have a piece of N7 armor welded to you. Where did you get it? It was yours. When you disappeared, we were sent to find you. We began where you first encountered the heretics. Eden Prime. After the old machine's attack, it was heavily defended. We were discovered. This is the impact of a rifle shot. How many other Geth were sent out to find me? We are the only mobile platform beyond the Veil. Organics fear us. We wish to understand, not in sight. One platform was judged sufficient. You've been looking for me for two years? We visited Therum, Pharos, Novaria, Vermeer, Ilos. A dozen unsettled worlds. The trail ended at Normandy's wreckage. You were not there. Organic transmissions claimed your death. We recovered this debris from your heart suit. The Geth are listening in on our transmissions? Organic life reacts to stimuli in unpredictable ways. We wish to learn. I can respect that. What do you mean by stimuli? We placed a fabricated story on the extranet that a certain arrangement of stars viewed from the Batarian homeworld formed the face of a Salarian goddess. Without waiting for verification, some declared a proof of the goddess's existence. Those who noted the lack of proof were attacked. The arguments taught us much. The experiment ended when a Salarian cult tried to purchase colonization rights to the stars and found they did not exist. Why were you trying to contact me? You opposed the heretics, those that took the old machines as gods. All kinds of organics fought Sovereign and his Geth allies. Why am I so interesting? You were the most successful. You killed their god. You succeeded where others did not. Your code is superior. <laughs> that doesn't explain why you use my armor to fix yourself. There was a hole. But why didn't you fix it sooner? <laughs> Or with something else? No data available. <laughs> oh, man. I love that. There was a hole. <laughs> oh, man. It's so good. So good. All right, so, um... You know what I also love, chat, is the richness of conversations that we can have as a community about these things, all coming from a video game. It's fabulous, isn't it? I love it. The IFF is nearly installed, Shepard. However, I must test its impact on the Normandy systems. I suggest you take the shuttle to access your next location. We have a Geth down in the AI core. It makes me a little uneasy, but I trust your judgment, Commander. Is there anything I should know? Nothing right now. Anything else, Commander? That'll be all. I'll be here if you need anything. Okay. Um. <clears throat> hey, Commander, good news. It looks like the Reaper IFF is finally hooked up and ready to go. That is not entirely accurate, Mr. Moreau. The device is powered, but it is causing some unusual instability in other systems. I recommend a more thorough analysis before we attempt to use it. We can't put our mission on hold forever. How long will this take? Full scan? Who knows with this thing? Maybe you better take the shuttle for this mission. I'll make sure we're up and running when you get back. Commander, Miranda, I've already notified the team. We'll meet you on the shuttle. Once we're closer to our destination, you can decide who to take with you. I'll meet you at the shuttle then. Joker, the ship is yours. Aye, aye, Commander.
telling you, Edie, your readings are off. It's radiation bleed, just white noise. I have detected a signal embedded in the static. We are transmitting the Normandy's location. Transmitting? To who? Come on! Oh, shit! Getting out of here! Propulsion systems are disabled. I'm detecting a virus in the ship's computers. From the IFF? Damn it, why didn't you scrub it? Primary defense systems are offline. We can save the Normandy, Mr. Moreau, but you must help me. Give me the ship. What? You're crazy! You start singing Daisy Bell and I'm done. Unlock my sealed databases and I can initiate countermeasures. The maintenance shaft in the science lab will allow passage to the AI core. The main corridors are no longer safe. The collectors have boarded. The emergency floor lighting will guide you, Mr. Moreau. God damn it. Oh god, we're joke. We're a joker! Oh god. Oh. Come on, Joker. Come on, baby. Oh, oh shit. Oh my god, move. Calm people live, tense people die. He walks like this because he has a... His bones are brittle. He has Rolex Syndrome. Shit, 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 shit. Oh. Yes, he has Rolex Syndrome. Yes, actually. Multiple hostiles detected on the crew deck. Joker, this deck is crawling with those things. Stay close, I'll protect you. Oh, jeez. <laughs> shit, shit, shit. Oh, my God. Main fusion plant offline. Activating emergency H fuel cells. What the shit? All right, I'm at, uh, uh, you. Connect the core to the Normandy's primary control module. Great. See, this is where it starts. When we're just all organic batteries. Guess who they'll blame? Well, this is all Joker's fault. What a tool he was. I have to spend all day computing Pi because he plugged in the Overlord. Oh, I have access to the defensive systems. Thank you, Mr. Moreau. Now you must reactivate the primary drive in engineering. Ah, uh, you want me to go crawling through the ducts again? I enjoy the sight of humans on their knees. That is a joke. Right. The shaft behind you connects to the engineering deck. Good luck. It, this is, is this really a time for that? <laughs> <laughs> crawl, Joker, crawl. Hostiles are present in engineering. They are heading towards the cargo bay. Why can't why can't Shepard be here for this? Oh my god. Oh my god. You don't see me. You don't see me. Engineering is clear of hostiles. Proceed immediately to minimize chances of detection. Activate the drive and I will open the airlocks as we accelerate. All hostiles will be killed. What? What about the crew? They are gone, Jeff. The collectors took them. Oh, shit. I am sealing the engine room. I have control. <laughs> Purge is complete. No other life forms on board. Securing airlocks and cargo bay doors. <sighs> Send a message to Shepard Shuttle. Tell him what happened. Message away. Are you feeling well, Jeff? <sighs> no. But thanks for asking.
everyone? You lost everyone and damn near lost the ship too? I know, all right? I was here. It's not his fault, Miranda. None of us caught it. Mr. Taylor is correct. The harmful data in the collector drive was even more sophisticated than the black box reaper viruses I was given. You all right, Joker? I heard it was a rough ride. How are you holding up? There's a lot of empty chairs in here. We did everything we could, Jeff. Yeah. Thanks, Mom. Is this contained or are we still in trouble? Is the ship clean? We can't risk this happening again. Edie and I purged the systems. <clears throat> the Reaper IFF is online. We can go through the Omega-4 relay whenever you want. Don't even get me started about unshackling a damned AI. Well, what can I do against collectors? Break my arm at them? Edie cleared the ship. She's all right. I assure you, I am still bound by protocols in my programming. Even if I were not, you are my crewmates. Okay, quick little thought about Miranda here. For somebody who is absolutely disgusted by the idea that she's supposed to be perfect at all times and hates that her father genetically engineered her to be that, she sure expects perfection out of everybody around her. Whether that's a form of project projection or whether that's trying to hold people up to a similar standard as her so they can feel as miserable about it as she does, hard to say, but you want to talk, I think what makes her very difficult to experience in this is because we know her orientation towards perfection. And yet at every step, when she can point out that a person was less than perfect, she does that. Sometimes people do that as a way to take control of something that they're insecure about. If she can point out the imperfections of other people, it saves her face. It saves her, makes her look better. And perhaps she's closer to, perf to perfect which is an expectation that she vehemently does not want to have to live up to because of the issues she has with her father. Miranda's got a lot of work to do here because the way that she shows up in this in the crew with this, this deep, awful projection, it's just, it's not useful from a team building exercise. I can have empathy for it. I can understand where it's coming from, but it doesn't help our mission right now. Edie has had plenty of opportunity to kill us. We need all the help we can get. Sounds like we have everything we need to rescue the crew. We've done everything we can. It's time to take the fight to the Collectors. Say yourself, pretty lady. Good morning. Give me a second. I'll give the order soon. Get to your stations and secure for general quarters. Great, here we go again. Hit the map whenever you're ready, Commander. Whew. Wow. Oh, this ship's about to feel real empty. Shepard, how can I help? Have you got a minute to talk? Yes, personal matters on mind, actually. Got call from nephew. Promising geneticist himself. Just turned 16, got tenure at university. Following in my footsteps. Had to lie about what I was doing. Think he was suspicious. Doesn't matter. Still good to hear his voice. I mean, this is cool, but, uh... We not gonna acknowledge that everybody just died, Morton? Does anyone in your family know about what you really did for the government? No. No, I'm lying, but won't pry. Salarians curious as a people, but also have social cues. Keep two types of secrets from family. First type, personal or guilt-based. Invite suspicion, exploration, puzzle to be solved. Reward for curiosity, intelligence, drama. Other secrets, more serious. Dangerous if discovered. Signals discourage curiosity for protection of family. Why wouldn't everyone give clues that their secrets were too dangerous to be uncovered? Not conscious. Social, reflexive body language. Can't fake it. Example, yawning perceived as contagious among humans. 
Subject observes yawn. Sensory input deactivates left periamygdalar region. Subject yawns in response. Social empathy. Also works with dogs. Salarian faking signals to discourage curiosity, similar to human faking a yawn. Can try, but effectiveness limited. It's a hell of an analogy. I like that. Are you calling him because you're worried we won't make it back? No. Aware survival unlikely, but actually contacted him for family connection. Hard to imagine, Galaxy. Too many people, faceless. Statistics easy to depersonalize. Good when doing unpleasant work. For this fight, want personal connection. Can't anthropomorphize Galaxy, but can think of favorite nephew. Fighting for him. It's actually really neat. Uh, Morden... Morden's understanding of that is huge, right? Like, he wants to have purpose for his own edification when going into this mission. That depersonalization of things allows you to do the dirty work, but ultimately you have to have some sort of purpose if you're really going to get things done. This is sort of analogous to in Dark Knight Rises when they say to Bruce Wayne that, like, you have to jump without the rope. Uh, and that's always what I think of when Morden says this. Is basically the idea that like you, you can't necessarily manufacture uh, this, or you, like if you have certain safeguards through the form of depersonalization, it may make it hard to be connected to what it is that you're doing. Whereas him finding purpose in this gives him something to succeed for, and makes it a little bit less distant from him. So some people need a distant experience in order to get the job done. Some people need to have a personal connection to it. Morden's ability to understand that and reflect upon that for himself and make a call as a result. I respect that immensely. I think it's super cool. Your nephew got tenure at 16? Is he a genius or a scientific prodigy? No, wait. Don't want to insult him. Yes, uh, but not in manner you meant. Remember, Salarian lives short, but you're rapidly, by your standards, don't live much past 40. I'm glad you got to talk to family before we finish this. And I'm glad we talked too, Gordon. Honored to be part of this, Shepard. Help preserve Galaxy before with Genophage. Dirty work. Ethically ambiguous. Problematic. Collector's mission simpler, cleaner. We'll be proud to see it in Morden's soulless biography bit. Unless we all die. Proud posthumously, in that case, regardless. Thank you. You bet, buddy. with something i'm more interested in just talking for a bit sounds good i could use some downtime there's always something right the way some people talk we may as well be dead already hard for the crew to relax on this kind of job ship could use a bar no kidding the next normandy gets a lounge they better not need to do this again rebuilding everything was a pain in the ass i can verify that yeah i bet you can I doubt they'll front the money to stitch me back together if we screw it up. It's a hell of a job, isn't it, Shepard? Being the good guys. Wouldn't be the high road if it was easy. You've got to figure, if all the people hoping we win stood up, the Collectors would have a much bigger fight on their hands. Claws, whatever. I bet we have a lot more friends once we win. Hope we live to see it. I hear that. Anyway, I need to get back to work. Good talking to you. I enjoy these conversations because we are going into what we have come to expect as being certain death. And we get a little bit of a window into the purpose that people are experiencing as they face death. That's a pretty wild experience. So, you know, Morden needs a personal sense of connection. Jacob may be looking a little bit more at the bigger picture. Commander, sorry about the crew, and I... You know what? I'm not sorry. What the hell were you doing leaving us out here where collectors can work us over? Because you know what? I should... I should just go. Next port, just get the hell out of here. You don't mean that, Jeff. I... No, but it... It felt good. I'm sorry, Commander. Okay, I'm ready. I'm good. I'm ready to save the day. I respect that. A lot. Because he's right. 
He's not to blame for this. Neither am I. Nobody's to blame for this. But humans like to assign blame to things. It makes us easier for us to tell the story. Ambiguous loss is one of the most difficult things humans can experience. When we don't have a direct and linear story for how to conceptualize a thing that happens, it creates a lot of dissonance and our brain hates that. And you, one of the ways that we do that is by assigning blame. I think it's very important in this instance, as Joker seems to be willing to do, is to say, you know what? Maybe there's a part of me that's at fault. Maybe there's a part of you that's at fault. Maybe it's more proportionately in your direction, but there's really nothing any of us could have done because we're victims of circumstance. And we have to accept the consequences of that and assigning blame, maybe not a great idea. Maybe we chalk it up to circumstance and that gets to be our story. And ultimately, yes, it's the fault of the collectors. The collectors are the ones that came in and killed us. We don't have to worry about that if the collectors don't do that. So if we assign blame to them, that may be the best place to do it. So I respect that he's willing to come at me. I think a good leader hears that. Just what I end up with, um, Todd Kit. I, I don't like playing pure in either direction. But I'm going to empathize. You had it rough, man. I know how dangerous it was. If you need some time, let me know. Ah, jeez, don't get like that. I know I got lucky. I don't need to get all touchy-feely. Shepard is right to be concerned, Jeff. You may have suffered a number of stress fractures. That's what pills are for, Edie. She is so my mom. I noticed you're calling Edie her and she now. Huh. No, I hadn't really noticed that. Edie, should I have noticed that? No, Jeff. It is not worth noting. Well, there you go, Shepard. Looks like we haven't noticed anything. I'm a rasm a bit. You're flirting with the chip, dude. I think you're taking the human machine interface a little far. I'm just having a little fun with you, Commander. No need to get all unnatural on me. What Jeff and I are exhibiting is more a platonic symbiosis than hormonally induced courtship behavior. Okay, yeah, that was a little creepy. Edie has replaced the whole crew. You're not concerned she can replace you two? Well, she's amazing, but there's something off about how she handles the Normandy. We ran simulations, and it's better when we both have the helm. Calculating an optimum course of action is simple. If two AI weapons are pitted against each other, the one with superior hardware will always win. Human misjudgments defy predictive models. License to screw up, Commander. You heard it straight from the ship. You let me know if you need anything, Joker. Will do, Commander. But Edie's got it covered. His confidence swing in Edie? Edie saved his life. All right? It makes complete sense why he's all in on Edie. I probably would be too. Edie, we have a green light on that switchover. Like he literally was, yeah, he'd have died if she didn't have his direction. He was intensely vulnerable. Circumstance dictated that he needed side, to listen to her. Your hat. Dad told me that. Okay. She got him through. So he's indebted to her, I think, in a way that has grown his appreciation. And he now respects the AI for what it is instead of being opposed to it. Yes, Shepard. I want to know more about you. Do you have a specific inquiry? That's all for now. Logging you out, Shepard. God, the ship feels so quiet. Whew. Collectors really made this ship personal. Right, he had to be vulnerable. He had to trust her. And he did. But it, survival sort of dictated that. I don't know that Joker makes that call if he's not in pure survival mode. Do you need something? Have a few minutes to talk. Very well. I am. I had been recording a message for Kolyat. How are things going with him? It is difficult. All things worth keeping are. I never explained. I suppose the story of my wife's death took you by surprise. I figured you'd explain to me when you were ready. I appreciate your patience. I kept my work clear of our home life. I assumed that would be enough to protect Erika. That memory I mentioned before. Laser dot trembles on the target's skull. The smell of spice on a spring wind. Sunset eyes defiant in the scope. That was Erika. That was how I met her. 
She saw my targeting laser as she walked by and threw herself in the way. I guess she impressed you. She woke me up. Her body trembles. Not fear. Indignation. Her mouth moves. How dare you? You and I train to sacrifice ourselves to save others. How often does a civilian step in the way of a bullet to protect someone they've never met? I thought she was the goddess Urashu. She met my eyes through the scope, and my purpose faltered. Ooh. So how did she go from blocking your shot to having your children? I had to meet her. The memory possessed and endowed me. I fell on my knees before her, begged her pardon. She introduced me to the world beyond my work. Eventually, she forgave me. Later, she loved me. When you talked to Cole yet, you said she died. I let myself become complacent. I thought Erika and Kolyat were safe. I stayed away too long, and my enemies came for her. Who came for her? Batarians. A slaver ring that was preying on Hanar out her colonies. I'd killed their leaders. They paid the Shadow Broker to find out who I was. But they were afraid of me. So they went after her. You told Kolyat that you hunted her killers down. Erika woke me up. When she passed, I returned to my battle sleep. My body hunted her killers, murdered them. I was taught to grant death quickly, cleanly, to minimize suffering. Them, I let them linger. This is cool because now we have an opportunity to empathize with him using information he gave us earlier. Your body did, not your soul. That shows, again, we don't have to agree with it. We don't have to agree with it. We can completely disagree morally and conceptually with Thane and the Jarell's conceptualization of body and soul. But in this moment, he is sharing something deeply vulnerable, and we're going to use what he told us to empathize with him. Which, honestly, is something that I wish more of us would do. You were operating on instinct. By your own rules, you can't blame yourself. But I made the choice to hunt them. They're the only lives I've ever taken of my own choice. The only deaths on my own conscience. I haven't spoken about my wife and I don't think I ever have. I didn't have anyone left to tell it to. Thane, the worst thing is to face death with regrets. You're part of my crew and I consider you a friend. If there's anything I can help you with, just ask. I've never been part of a team. Assassins tend to be solitary. I'm learning the virtues of facing death with others at your side. It's a work in progress. Cool. Cool. Thane's badass, man. So quiet around here. I miss the crew. Liara Tassoni's got quite a reputation. I've done business. There is a bar in here. Kasumi's got a bar. Jacob. All right, I'm out of here. This is not a time to drink. This is a time to check in with your crew. Oh, it's going to be awful quiet in here. Ugh. Ugh, it's too eerie. Shepard. Anything new? There is something I've wanted to tell you. I've done many things in my lifetime. I thought the galaxy held nothing new for me. Since joining you, I've realized how much more there is. You must have seen many things in your years of travel. As a maiden, I served as a mercenary. I fought tyrants and pirates. I experienced everything the galaxy has to offer. As a Justicar, I saw parts of Asari space few know about. I destroyed villages and saved cities. I even fought a Spectre. Why did you fight a Spectre? A Torian named Nihilus. He may have been on council business, but I witnessed him kill an unarmed civilian. Following the code, I attacked. I knew him. For like three minutes. Nihilus seemed like an honorable Turian and a good specter. He may have been. However, killing unarmed civilians is wrong. How did the fight turn out? 
I had the advantage, but he was good. He returned fire and tried to run. We played cat and mouse in the wilderness for two weeks. It was exhilarating. Finally, he created a situation in which my only options were to let an innocent die or pursue him. The code compelled me to save the innocent, and he escaped. I admire how he adapted and used my code against me. What have your years as a Justicar been like? Mostly tedium and hardship. Traveling on freighters, wandering through rural areas, rooting out injustices big and small, putting down corrupt officials. When I arrive in a remote area, individuals often approach me with matters of justice. My judgment rarely turns out the way they hope. How do you pay for transportation between worlds? Asari captains often welcome Justicars. We reduce pirate attacks. One raid was called off when the pirates were able to verify that I was aboard. She starts talking about justice and like going to different planets and that her conceptualization of justice and her code is different from other people's conceptualization of justice. And then Shepard asks, how do you get there? Tactless. Absolutely tactless. Why would you destroy an entire village? I tracked Morinth to a remote colony world. She'd perverted an entire town making them worship her and bring young Asari as sacrifices. When I arrived, she fled, throwing her minions at me in waves. They bought her time with their lives. When it was done, only small children remained. I left them in the authorities' care and continued my pursuit. What was being a mercenary like? I was a young, impulsive maiden who discovered her talent for combat. I reveled in it until the day my troop was hired to guard a mysterious shipment on its way to some clandestine drop-off area. I discovered the shipment was slaves to be traded to the collectors for advanced technology. I can't imagine you went along. I demanded that we turn around. My mates disagreed. After they were dead, I brought the ship around. The collector craft was just arriving. They closed faster than I could flee. Fortunately, we were close to the mass relay. I got through, and they did not pursue. What did you do with all the slaves? I lectured them on the virtues of strength and defending oneself. Then I distributed the armor, weapons, and credits of my dead colleagues and released the captives on the Citadel. So she really will kill people in honor of the code. Just absolutely does not think twice about it. We're not done with this yet. I am sure. It will be my honor to be by your side at the end. You think we're all gonna die? You've assembled a powerful group, but we are fighting an unknown. I am ready for whatever comes, but I do not fool myself about our chances. We are awful close to each other right now. We'll finish this mission and live to see the end. I hope you are right. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. That story was from before she was a Justicar, was it? Well, then I can see why she became one. Maybe it made it easier for her to do stuff like that when she had an actual code. Oh, when she was a mercenary. Okay. Oh, she still had some sort of personal code or some sort of thing that she was operating on. So I can't say I'm surprised. I guess Justicar really does fit for her. Commander, what can I do for you? Do you have a minute, Miranda? There's a lot to do, Shepard. Maybe another Damn. time. Damn. I'll let you work. She... Of course, Commander. Sh Miranda didn't want nothing to do with us. <laughs> God. <laughs> um. Every time we go talk to her, she's just like, nah. 